Hello, listening people. Uh, hello. <laughs> Hi, Vartek. Uh, 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 Spit and Polish presents unappreciated masterpieces. You don't want to say hi to me? That's a bit rude. You don't want to say hi, Ryan? Hello, Ryan Slewinski, the host of the show. Hello, Bartek. I can't pronounce your last name, even though I am Polish. I still don't know. <laughs> like, we've been doing this nearly 30 episodes, and I still can't pronounce your last name. Yeah, what, what is your last name? We've known each other for more than 30 episodes. No, we've <laughs> known each other for 30 episodes. <laughs> we don't Did even... we meet when we pressed the record button yeah. in the first episode? <laughs> you know that the audience think that we don't exist out of the time frames of these. Ah. The audience can only get to know us by listening listening to these back to back to get an understanding of our character and lives. We don't exist outside of this time period of the podcast. So, is it like an anachronism when in the Scooby-Doo episode I talked about my first time using a washing machine? No, it's a backstory. Oh, okay, <laughs> I, mean, I see. Like, All right, so that's 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 fair. how that's how characters work. Yes, it establishes, so, yeah. We're spin Polish, likingly, because we're always spitting and we both happen to be Polish. And what do we do, Bartek? Well, uh Ignoring the part that says Spit and Polish Presents, you might have noticed that the actual show is called Unappreciated Masterpieces. Mm. And that is the core of what we do here. We find movies that are these unappreciated masterpieces. Movies that may have never done well, maybe did do well, and now aren't seen as being so grand. Movies that basically right now are not seen as the top shit, the things that you really like, the things that are talked about. We want to basically create cult classics. Yeah, that's, that's right. So, yeah, we get movies that deserve some more love, and we give them that love that they need. So, Bartek, what is the movie needing some serious cup of love? <laughs> well, this is certainly a movie that will give a nice big mugger love. <laughs> yeah. Can't use the word cup, because you made it. Yep. I'm cool. But you rhymed, so go on. Oh, yeah. Um, the movie that we are doing today is hmm. Starsky i Hutch. Look, I don't speak Polish. I've been doing this for nearly 30 episodes now. I'm nearly 30 years old, because each episode's a year of our life, I imagine. Okay. And when so we started this, we were one years old. Um, I don't speak Polish. As, as much as I like to say I'm Polish, I don't know how to speak the language or understand it. So I don't know what movie we're watching could be anything i was kind of hoping you did know the english name because i kind of forgotten it it's uh, the polish name is starsky i hutch <laughs> could uh, be anything the english name is dicky rob no, no. Uh, <laughs> we've already watched <laughs> sorority <laughs> no we've already watched that one kangaroo yeah oh, but... oh oh it's starsky and hutch oh starsky and hutch one of my favorite films of all time based on a critically acclaimed tv show of the day wonderful but of course, Bartek, we don't always do this alone, do we? Oh, very rarely do Very rarely. Every now and then we do. But we aren't going to do Starsky and Hutch alone. It's not just going to be Starsky and Hutch. It's going to be Starsky and Hutch and who's our guest? Oh, okay, so the Huggy Bear to our Starsky... <laughs> <laughs> the Huggy Bear to our Starsky and Hutch today is Mr. Sam Langsford. Langsford. Langs nice. Langsford? Yes, Langsford. Langs yes. Toyota. Yes. So I that. think it's unfair that he called you a huggy bear. I mean, look, you are pretty... you got a lot of swag to you, but I think he's more a captain. Like, he's more the, the old black captain yeah, it's, it's from It's really just choosing which black Tudor. character you want to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he he's, he's, he's the token black to man be honest, to he's, he's really, I'm always a token something. To be honest, he's really Vince Vaughn. I mean, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you look most like Vince Vaughn out of any can't of them. Quite, quite grow a mustache like that. Oh, you can give it a try. So, Starsky and Hutch, which came out in what year, Sam? 2004, and I have that committed to memory now. He can remember that. So, we have already watched and we're going to rewatch the 2004 classic Starsky and Hutch. Of course, this is an emotional piece, one of the best in cinema. It is an adaptation of a TV show into film, and we always know that, unfortunately, TV shows adapted into films don't always pan out. But I think this was a trendsetter, because after this, this did, you know, this did relatively well. But it's not as remembered, it's not as loved, it's not in the catalogue of Owen Wilson and Ben Stiller movies that everyone loves, you know? It's not like up there with Zoolander and up there with, you know, uh, any Owen Wilson movie. You know, he's, he's amazing. You can't just choose one of his <laughs> films. <laughs> Long list of you know, All of them. And um, I think this is a trendsetter because after this, 
you know, movies started, you know, getting TV shows and, you know, making them into... Hollywood got TV shows and made them... I mean, look, 21 Jump Street. Would that have done any any good if this didn't exist? Don't think so. Because this really proved that you could get a show like that and do it. And you can see evidence as to it, too. Because we've done Flipper on this show, and that was before Starsky and Hutch, and... Yeah, Charlie's really... Angels was before it though, wasn't it? Yeah, but here's the thing that's different. This is way more in the vein of Twenty One Jump Street in comparison to Charlie's Angels. Because Charlie's Angels wasn't like Starsky and Hutch. It was a like it was a faithful kind of like it's not no, faithful in the way that it wasn't play. It wasn't spoofing the style as much. While this is a spoof it's a satire it's taking the conventions and the understandings of the 70s cop genre and the show and all the stuff that goes with it and flipping it on its head and doing a direct spoof satire there's a bit in the movie that i can't wait to talk about and it's just a direct image of this hence why things like 21 jump street where they're self-aware of that while charlie's angels didn't really have as much of a self-aware nature it was more like a wink to the camera but not as self-aware I think. So, we're about to start this bad boy. We're about to, you know, lock into our seats of Starsky and Hutch. But just before we do, what was our experiences with this movie, guys? Had we seen this before? Yes, a long time ago. A long, long time ago? I don't know who put the hand up to say, let's go see this film. Did you see in the cinema? Yes, I did. (laughs) Oh, shit. Yes, I was in in year eight. What a great time to be alive. I imagine I was still at that point where I wasn't allowed to watch MA films, so I had to make do with what was available at the time. And Starsky and Hutch was available? Yes, it was available. <laughs> Jeez Louise. And did you do you remember your experience of the cinema? No, it's almost as if it's been excised from my memory and hmm. now it has returned. Well, sometimes you move. go through uh, an experience so good that it is traumatising that you block it up from your memory. Bartek, what about you? Had you seen this before? No, uh, oh. I'd seen it for the first time just the day before yesterday of this recording and... Uh, And even beyond that, I didn't even really know what Starsky and Hutch was, uh, (laughs) beyond the reference in Dickie Roberts. Um, (laughs) Like, honestly, it could have... I just kind of assumed they were, like, musicians or something. They could have been a cartoon mouse and cat for all you knew. Who knows? It's just another in that wonderful long list of cop A name plus cop B name together. Mm, With guns. Yes. Guns leaning side to side. Yeah. So my experience with this movie was I have watched it many a times. I own it on DVD. That's right. I love this movie enough. It was during that period of time where DVDs were just kind of a thing. So my parents would just buy any movie that they knew of. They were like, it didn't matter if it was good or bad or mediocre or even if they hadn't seen it. They're like, I've heard of Starsky and Hutch. I'll get that on DVD. Like, you know, that came out. Yeah, we'll get that on DVD. You know, and I miss that period of time when new technology came along. Like, even, you know, like, say, downloading all that. When all that kind of stuff came accessible, you would just get anything. Like, do you remember that time where it's like, oh, yeah, downloading came along, and you just download anything that you could go, like, oh, yeah, Baba, I remember that. I'm going to download that. <laughs> well, same with Netflix, when, say. When, when Ice Age 2 was in cinemas, my stepbrother downloaded <laughs> off LimeWire this file called Ice Age 2 DVD Rip. <laughs> Please tell me it was a DVD rip. It was Eurotrip. <laughs> <laughs> and I've loved Eurotrip ever since. I still have the file. <laughs> Does it give you a computer <laughs> virus because it's from LimeWire? No. It wow. was legit- legitimately so, Eurotrip. Fun fact that will lead us into this movie. The director of the predecessor to Eurotrip, Road Trip, is the guy who directed this, I do believe, or one of the writers of Road Trip is a part of this great movie. Hence why Amy Smart, who was in Road Trip as, guess what, the girl, is in this movie as, guess what, one of the girls. She's the blonde one, not Carmen Electra, in case you're wondering. Ah, Carmen Electra. So we're going to start this bad boy right now. So get your copy of the 2004 classic Starsky and Hutch. I imagine you all have a legal copy of this, a downloaded copy, uh, a DVD. Hell, if you're really, really cool, maybe a video. I don't know. Like, I imagine these would have came out just when VHS was kind of dead. So maybe there's someone out there going, finally, I can watch this on, on my videotape version of Starsky and Hutch. But ironically, they're watching, like, the original 1970s pilot <laughs> movie. Uh, Alright, guys. Get ready, because in three, two, one, 
play. Oh, and we're off. So, um, Sam, you were saying you wonder if someone can see their oh, car. Oh, yes, the uh, <laughs> Warner Brothers logo, where you can see the Warner Brothers studio lot. I imagine there are cars visible, and I always want to know, can they recognise their own cars in this? I imagine. I There's some to. guy who's just like, that's my car! That's mine! I am going to be buried in that car. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's the Dimension Films logo, and I just always want to watch Scream when I say that. Yeah, I always think of like uh, Robert Rodriguez movies because he uses Dimension as well. I think so. We could watch. Oh, that's my ocean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you own I that. that. Yeah, you own this. So weird thing about this film. There's a lot of people in it, and there's people in it that you don't expect to be in it, such as. Terry Crews is in this movie. And who the hell is Terry Crews? You don't know Terry Crews? Who's Terry Crews? He's the big muscly black guy. He's like in a couple of scenes in this movie, he's like one of the head drug dealers. Oh, he's well in, I remember the muscly he's black. He's in the man. movie White Chicks. See, I, I I haven't seen him. Wow. Have you watched Brooklyn Nine Nine? No, I haven't. Fucking hell. You don't know your Terry Crews catalog. No, I don't. I like of course I don't know who he is. He was in Bridesmaids. <laughs> Like, I was really not in the right mind when I saw No one that was. Film. So, we have this woman here. Isn't she from Natural Born Killers? Yes, that's uh, Juliet Lewis, who was also in Cape Fear. So, this is the great caliber of this movie, because she's an actress that has done many, many wonderful roles. She was in Natural Born Killers, uh, Cape Fear, uh, you know, um, From Dusk Till Dawn. Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> you know, the caliber of her work is impressive, to say the least. She's doing a magnificent job here as... Quite a bit of range. As the wife. <laughs> the, uh, no, no, or, or the, the, ba- the bad, The bad girl. No, no, she's not even the wife. He's her... She's his side girl. Yes. That's what he says later on. He's like, yeah, it's because you're my side girl. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Thanks, Vince. So, Bartek, who are you surprised to see come up in this movie? Um, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> you didn't know Snoop Dogg was going to be Huggy Bear? <laughs> well, I mean, when I when I saw, like, the cast listing, I was like, oh, these guys are... Oh, Snoop Dogg's in it. Okay. Um, I think Snoop Dogg is the greatest cast in this movie. I always yeah. think of... Now, have any of us seen the original Starskin Hutch? Before no. we get deep. On TV1, back when we had pay TV. Oh, wow, how was that? Was it good? Yeah. Was this movie faithful? It was faithful, certainly. I get the same sort of vibes, but it sort of blended into that same kind of long list of first will be Starsky and Hutch, then Charlie's Angels, then Hogan Zeroes, and now they've all just become one World War Two themed detective film. <laughs> but the be- which one was the best one, in your opinion? In my opinion. Which one was the funnest one to watch out of those Hogan's three? Heroes because Nazis. Clearly Hogan's Heroes. Because Nazis. <laughs> Hold on. Um, I think of The Simpsons when Krusty, um, when Homer becomes Krusty, and he goes to that convention, and he's just like, and to accept the award is the son of the guy who played <laughs> Huggy Bear. <laughs> and, he's like, and he walks in, he's just like Huggy Bear, and he just walks in, <laughs> accepts the award. <laughs> and that was my Starsky and Hutch knowledge. <laughs> well, The Simpsons teaches us a lot. <laughs> like, and I'm like, what the hell's up? A hockey bear. <laughs> Why is he called hockey bear? I, I've yet to find I out. I really the answer wish to that, that because... I did the research onto the original show to find out if he's got a nickname that is there for a reason. Or Bartek, I know you're about to say it. Or it could be like from Saved by the Bell, where it's just like he's called Screech just because his name is called Screech. Maybe Huggy Bear is just called Huggy Bear because. No, that's ridiculous, right? <laughs> he's clearly called Huggy Bear because he's a nice man. Who has uh, you? Okay, Huggy Bear is the greatest kind of fake name to have because the irony in this movie, I don't know about the show, is he doesn't like to be touched, yeah. yet his name is Huggy. That's deep. So, yeah, maybe maybe it's like, you know, when later on in this movie they go, Big Ed, maybe he's little. It's like, Huggy, get it? Because he doesn't like to be hugged. That layers upon layers there. You this mean, a Big Earl, I believe, was the name. Big Earl? Oh, yeah, Big Ed's Big from uh, Twin Peaks. Uh, so here he is. Another actor from Dusk, Till Dawn, from Dusk Till Dawn. It's like the director watched the Robert Rodriguez Tarantino movie from Dusk Till Dawn and just went, I want that guy, I want that chick, I want this. <laughs> Haven't seen him Starsky and Hutch. Of course, Bartek, do you know the captain? He... I haven't met him, but... <laughs> <laughs> but do you know him as an actor? 
Uh, I think I might have recognized his name, but I don't know. He's like a black black exploitation actor hero from yeah, such yeah. titles he as like one. Hammer. <laughs> all this and he was in the movie from dusk till dawn and he played like a black black exploitation hero kind of vietnam guy and he's like about to fight vampires he's talking about his vietnam experience and he just has like flashback like you just see the camera kind of pans around and looks at something else but in the background you just hear yeah and then they got me in the swear they got me <laughs> there's a bullets fight everywhere and he's just having a name flashback uh so it's great to see an actor of that caliber who would have been the captain back in the 70s? Like Apparently he worked with the guy who played the captain. Yeah, the original captain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this movie is an emotional piece, but we haven't talked about the two stars in the room. You mean... Uh, Bartek and Ryan. Yeah, we haven't talked about us enough. No. I was thinking Ben Stiller's hair. It's Ben Stiller's majestic. hair and Owen Wilson's nose. Yes. Um, what do you guys feel about Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson? Uh, I've liked a lot of things that I've seen Ben Stiller in, so it was great. <laughs> Take that, Owen. Uh, same with Owen Wilson, though. <laughs> Good. I was doing it one at a time, Ryan. <laughs> you just made it sound like you only like Ben Stiller. <laughs> no, one at a time. You give each okay, person their okay. own shining moment, much like in this show when we do the reviews. Yeah, go on. You were saying you like Ben Stiller? Yep, and I like Owen Wilson. End <laughs> comments. <laughs> <laughs> End of. What do you feel about Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson? Ben Stiller, I enjoy his father. Jerry? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoy Jerry he, as well. He, he makes me happy. Like, Ben Stiller, I'm just glad exists because that makes Ben Stiller, uh, his father, happy. Yeah. So I'm like, I oh, want good, Ben Stiller Jerry. to direct a Star Trek movie because he loves Star Trek oh, so nice. much. So I'd love to watch that. Ben Stiller... And Jerry Stiller be the bad guy? Jerry Stiller could be his dad. Like, <laughs> just like a really angry Jewish alien. Yeah. So, what about Owen Wilson? Do Owen Wilson, he, I do enjoy. I he's prefer, Jerry. I prefer, <laughs> I prefer his brother, because I'm a big fan Luke, of Legally Blonde. Luke Wilson. Yes. One Take Wilson. That's yes. what they call him. What's he been doing since? Um, Idiocracy. <laughs> that's, I was, I was going to say that, and like, that's the only thing. No, says. he was in a movie called The Skeleton Twins with uh, Kristen Wiig and Bill Hader. I think that was like a year or two ago. Uh, great movie. He plays like the guy who lives with her. Like He just plays like the boyfriend, I think, or whatever. And he's just such an asshole oh, in know, a I real person. I know pers- that one you're talking about. Yeah, actually. he's such an asshole in a real person way. Like You can't pinpoint down what he's doing to be an asshole, but you just go, I don't like this guy. I'm a big fan of Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson, guys. I love them as a duo. Yeah. I think they're one of the most understated comedic duos ever. And I think they really do need to work more. And I feel like they need to do a franchise. And they're trying to do that with Zoolander. But I'd love to see the Starsky and Hutch franchise. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Take that, Star Wars. Well, 12, years, so 12 years later. Do you reckon there should be like a TV adaptation of this adaptation? Of no, the... I think there should be a book adaptation of the film. <laughs> <adaptation. laughs> that they write? Or... No, written by Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson's dads. <laughs> okay. And it'll be like... But with their faces on the cover. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Starsky and Hutch with Starsky as Jerry Stiller, <laughs> and he would just be like, and he would, and, about? and in the book, everything he writes will be in all caps because <laughs> he yells all the time. <laughs> With a, a, with a bit of Yiddish thrown in or something. Yiddish, yeah, and a bit of Yiddish. And even though Starsky's not married, in this one he will be, and he'll be married to like. The mum of George Costanza. <laughs> like, yeah, that would be like the dream team. So and here comes Snoop Dogg. You mean at this point he was Snoop Dogg, and then he transitioned into Snoop Lion, and now back to Snoop Dogg. Yeah, yes. Snoop Lion never caught on. What do you mean? I love Snoop Lion. <laughs> it was my favorite Snoop animal. <laughs> Snoop Koala. <laughs> it's right up. It's right up there with like all the other ones, like you know, Snoop Dolphin. You know, Snoop Slug. <laughs> Snoop Slug. <laughs> I love how um he makes people kiss his golden fist. Yes, I think that's is... a different film. Yeah, Snoop Fist. <laughs> <laughs> if you go to his Wikipedia page, there is a section on his pornographic films. Really? Yeah. He did pornographic film? Yeah. What? No. What? Apparently some... Are you yanking us, No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm the Wikipedia app right no, now. He did, and uh, but he didn't have sex in them. Oh, was he, he like... He was always like himself? A... 
Yes, he was always himself or a character like, based on himself, but he was like, he apparently played like a pimp in one. Oh, obviously. Where like he was a pimp with a bunch of like 40 porn stars and he was trying to convince a journalist to wow. become a porn star or something. I really like the idea that he's in porn movies in general. But yeah. I love the idea that Snoop Dogg's in porn movies, but he's that guy that's like the the plot device. No, he's like the uh, uh, PSA guy. <laughs> he would just be like, do porn. No, no, he would be like this. He would walk up to the porn actress. He's like, yeah, yeah, fuck me on this bench, and he would just walk over and go, hey, I wouldn't do that. Look at this bench, and he just points at like a ragged nail, <laughs> and he's just like, <laughs> well, he's just like. I suggest that you do it in a nice, warm, comfy bed. <laughs> it's like, and he like leads them to a bed, and he's just like, and they're like, "Thanks, Snoop," and he's just like, <laughs> "Doing my job," and just yep. like winks and then walks off. Well, that's that's in line with the whole thing of him not having sex in the films. <laughs> I love the idea that he helps them. Like, is there OHS officer on the set? <laughs> like, he's just like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa." Right, at least do a Snoop down. Dogg impression. I can't. <laughs> He's too cool. Like, if I did it... You know what my Snoop Dogg would be? It's like, if I did it, it would be so... Like, he's too cool f- to be audible. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> just don't so, hear anything. You'll be like this. You'll you're be like so this. cool, it's telepathic. Do your Snoop Dogg impression, uh, and I'll be doing it, but you, the audience, would just be hearing silence, and you guys would be like, wow, Ryan, that was great. Like, it was so spot on. <laughs> yeah, because Snoop Dogg is not of this world. If there was ever a guy to be called Snoop Dogg, it was definitely Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Because he does look like a chihuahua mixed with a rat. With his hair in this one, he looks like those naked dogs that don't have any fur. Yeah. But with his hair in real life, he just looks like like one of those poor dogs you find on the street with no owner nearby. And you just wonder, whose dog is this? (laughs) Who let the Snoop out? He's his own person. I like how knowledgeable his bodyguards are. I love this. This was my... For a moment... This was my favourite scene in the entire movie I, until I, a point. What? Mm, I'm not going to tell you the point, but the point will be later. But this is my favourite bit because it's just like a Mexican standoff, but with like iguana. logic. <laughs> <laughs> and an iguana. And an iguana with no tail. Uh, I love in the outtakes at the end, they show an iguana and just tail is painted blue. Yeah. <laughs> for this wonders of special effects they, hey. they wouldn't actually be able to chop off its tail I feel I feel they could have just bought one with a tail missing perhaps because you know why not well then you need two because one has a tail oh obviously but I, I think it'll be double. I think it'll be easier than fucking Ryan, blue paint and Ryan, special effects Ryan they have to spend a lot of money on cars in this movie I mean look I'm sure that this movie could have used a hundred thousand dollars worth of budgets to just digitally edit out a wristband on Owen Wilson do you know in a movie we've done on this show, Guess they who? spent $100,000 on budget to digitally edit out a wristband on Ashton Kutcher? Why would you do that? <laughs> because, like, what, anachronisms in movies are fun. Yeah, but it was like, I don't know, it was great. Now, this movie's never got any anachronisms because I wasn't born in the 70s, so everything that they're presenting to me, I believe, happened. Yes, mm-hmm. that seems quite Like clear. the fact that batteries fell out of his things but it still works <laughs> did they fall out apparently yeah. oh I don't know about that part well, something fell out but it doesn't matter because the music's still playing over this scene <laughs> <laughs> so it's diegetic and non-diegetic so guys who's your favourite are you a Starsky or are you a Hutch <sighs> between the Starsky and Hutch I'd have to I think I might lean more to a Hutch what do I'm going to go with a Vince Vaughn I knew you were going to choose none of them <laughs> I was also going to be like I'm obviously what is it Willis <laughs> Just... Willis? Is yeah, it like... Willis. I yeah. Love... <laughs> this, kid. this kid. I enjoy this kid. I love the fact that this kid by himself talks to a middle-aged white man who owns an RV. And threatens and, him. Uh, <laughs> and threatens him and he owes this guy money. I want to know that story. <laughs> Where's the prequel to the prequel? Yeah, where is Willis's story? Where Willis is What's Up? <laughs> yeah, you like that? What you talking about? Um, I love last night I watched this and one of my housemates joined in halfway through and she, we told her oh it's Starsky and Hutch and she's like oh yeah I know Starsky and Hutch or like she had an idea and then Willis came in and she's like oh is this what you're talking about Willis and I'm like no <laughs> no no and then just like this and then I was just like I can't wait for Urkel to appear in this <laughs> <laughs> and if there was a movie where Jaleel White had to be arrested for something this is the movie 
So, Bartek, during your experiences of this movie, yeah. you went in blind. You thought they were musicians. <laughs> 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 How did you feel about the movie? And and did it did did you enjoy it? And did it go in the way that you expected it to go? Well, the setup of it was that uh, you know these two cops who are not ideal in the eyes of their uh, superior officer uh, have gotten paired together in hopes that they would something mm. like what was the logic behind that really what that they were going to solve cases well but that they're two screw ups and together two screw ups make a no the chief was like you're a screw up in the fact that you're too pedantic and you're a screw up in the fact that you're not pedantic so if you I'll put to them together it we're currently being met by a contradiction in that and I'm going to put my foot down on character here why is the pedantic one suddenly happy to break the law just to look cool in because his mum <laughs> go on Martin. this is where I get pedantic it's like a your mum joke except someone else's mum <laughs> but it's the actual truth yeah yeah <laughs> I love that, that like, that's one of my favourite things is they turn the convention of your dad used to be the best cop on the force to your, your mum mom. used to be the best <laughs> cop and he goes to her grave and puts a donut <laughs> that was a nice little <laughs> I would love that hijack of movie since Jackie Chan got his butthole tickled in the tuxedo oh tickled you're now changing your tune Ryan you clearly said fingered in that episode <laughs> she- he tickled and fingered his butthole. Yep, and that but was your catchphrase in that This episode. movie had a donut scene, <laughs> and Owen Wilson's about to rob a dead guy, and he's our hero. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually the one we're supposed to relate to. I can relate to robbing dead bodies. I don't know I about imagine. you. I imagine. So, Bartek, you were saying about your general it, thing? It hit a lot of notes that uh, were kind of expected, but. It hit them in a good way, I feel. Mm. Like, it, the whole thing of, you know, they're two screw-ups, and obviously they're going to screw up a lot, and, gee, I wonder if they're going to have to turn in their badges at some point and then still continue doing what they're doing anyway. And, mm. yeah, that did happen. And it was hilarious all the way through. Great. You know you know something about, about Ben Stiller I enjoy? You like Jerry Stiller, I do too. But you know what I like about Ben? He's like Jerry Stiller in the way that he has rage. But he represses it more. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Ben Stiller throughout this movie, I love... Ben Stiller has this funny voice that he does when he gets all angry. Like, you know, he has that voice that he does where he's just like... You know, where he's just like... Oh, jeez! Like, he's just going through his teeth while Jerry Stiller's just like... Oh, the serenity! (laughs) And I really like... Jerry Stiller's more hammy, I guess you could say. Hammy? Yeah. Well, Ben Stiller's got... Like, he... His whole thing is... He's like, uh, his whole type of humor for me is a middle aged white guy with a lot of repressed issues going on. That's what I enjoy. While his dad is like an old white guy with a lot of external <laughs> issues going on. I feel like Jerry, Jerry Stiller is never <laughs> acting a character and is really just himself. Oh, clearly, you haven't watched King of Queens. <laughs> <laughs> I, I only know Jerry from uh, Seinfeld and from Zoolander. Zoolander, yeah. Not Trying to take a piss. <laughs> not King of Queens? No, I haven't watched King of Queens. Clearly, you haven't lived. That's what Kevin, that's Kevin J? Yeah, Kevin J. Ah, yeah. uh, he's Bartek's favourite character, Minetti. Minetti. Um, <laughs> imagine. <laughs> you know, I really thought Minetti was going to get a comeuppance. But in the end, he wins. <laughs> you know what I mean? If anyone's the real winner, it's Minetti. Oh, there's a point where Ben Stiller goes, No, Minetti, he's the worst cop on the entire force. <laughs> this point at that point we have no evidence to support that claim <laughs> beyond him being a dick <laughs> he's just a dick oh, yeah, I, I, a guess, dick, I guess ben Stiller. i can i guess he dick used the nice. police radio for like a joke instead of work but yeah but oh my god but i love um <laughs> this movie has a lot of layers going on to it you know some people might say vince vaughn's annoying but that's a good thing in this movie because he needs to be the annoying antagonist. Hang on, do people find Vince Vaughn annoying? I find Vince Vaughn annoying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll be honest with you. Vince Vaughn, out of this generation of comedians, you know, the Ben Stillers, the Will Ferrells, all that, he is the one that when I see a movie with his name in it, I actually go, I may skip that. 
I don't like Vince Vaughn. That's just oh, me. There's always one of these comedians. Some people may not like Will Ferrell or Owen Wilson or Ben Stiller. That's fine. But for me, Vince Vaughn's that one out of all of them that I just don't like any of his performances. There's not like that one Vince Vaughn movie where I go, yeah, you know, Vince Vaughn was perfect in that. Except for this. And he's a supporting character in this. That's why I find him good. Supporting character and antagonist. You know. Yeah, but like he's barely in the movie. Yeah, really, he's not. He's dosed out. So what you're saying is the less he's in a film, the better the film is. Yeah, it's kind of like Gilbert Gottfried. The less you have of him, the better he is. But with Vince Vaughn, the less of him, just the better the film is. You know what I mean? I don't like Vince Vaughn very much, but when I saw him in this movie playing an antagonist, I was actually really pumped because Vince Vaughn, why I don't like him is... Same reason why sometimes I don't like Will Ferrell is they portray him to be a good person, but he's so smug and smarmy and unlikable, but they're like, he's a good guy. You should like this. You should relate to this character. That's why I have a problem with Will Ferrell at the moment where it's like, daddy's home. You're like, oh, you know, Will Ferrell, he's a good guy. I'm like, clearly Will Mark Wahlberg signed. <laughs> and he's an arsehole. A little bit. Uh, how do you feel about Vince Vaughn in his classic action role in The Lost World Jurassic Park? Uh, look, can we not talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love Vince Vaughn in the shot for shot remake of Psycho. <laughs> he played Norman Bates. Oh, no, that's terrible. <laughs> no. Except for they added a deleted scene from the original movie and made it more overt, which is him wanking himself off watching her through a wall. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's not attractive enough to be Norman Bates. I'm strangely was attracted that, to him. Was that in the, like, a deleted scene? In the, the original Alpha. movie. There's a bit that's I think it's a lead or in a cut where he's looking at her through the peephole through the thing of her showering in the original Alfred Hitchcock. I think they they got rid of that, but in this one they're like it's a shot for shot remake. But instead he's not just watching her; he goes down and jerks his okay, girl. So the jerking well, in the was original not one, it's insinuated. Well, that's obviously what's going to happen because why else would he watch a woman mm-hmm. bathing? You know, like yeah. obviously he's going to jerk his girk. So, it was less subtle than Hitchcock. Yeah. So, <laughs> I really want to bring something up to you, Sam. I, I watched this movie, and I, it's like, you know, you know, i got to get Sam on this one. Because it's such a, a comedy... I don't know, you like your comedy movies. He's a big comedy <laughs> aficionado. But I, I saw something that I really want to get your uh, opinion on, which is the homophobia. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, with Bartek and I, uh, you know, we watch movies and they have all these jokes at the expense of, oh, they're gay. Ha ha ha. And that doesn't really affect us. But what about you? Because, you know, does that annoy you? Or do you actually get some laughs from some of those jokes yourself? I always wonder that. Well, as, as it's perfect that her breasts are about to appear as we discuss the homophobia in movies. Yeah, yeah, go on. As a, as a gay well, man... Well, you know a woman, I would have discussed the sex, sexism. <laughs> homophobia it is! As a gay man, I have to ask, are men really as hypnotised by breasts as these two? They are, are large breasts. They are, and I feel like at this point... That but this... also, she takes her panties off, so True. it's not just the breasts. Yes, but I, just, I don't know. I've seen many a naked man and not been that distracted. But at the same time... You know, she gets fully naked in front of them talking, and it's just great. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> but it's great. How but do you in feel? terms of homophobia, yeah, in terms... What, was, what was the name of that movie where Will Ferrell went to prison? Uh, Get Hard. Yeah, that one was one of the crossing the lines one, because not only is it a bunch of gay jokes, it's also a bunch of, like, rape jokes. Oh, yeah, the best kind of gay jokes are gay rape jokes. <laughs> <laughs> you got to make it a gay joke. Make it a... But with a movie like this, say, do you Wait, excuse no it a bit movie? more because yes, which, which many, which one, <laughs> which one? Maybe, maybe this is me not noticing my Will Ferrell thing. whole character. Yeah, but see that I didn't find Offensive? homophobic. I found it more. I did actually find that kind of. Funny. I found that the best part. Just because, <laughs> not be, not because of the Will Ferrell side of things, but more just because of the, <laughs> it's happening to the men this time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess that's fair enough. I, I, I just wasn't quite, because I sat there just going, the joke is he's gay because he's like, getting guys to be get sexual. And a lot of the humour of modern comedies with gay characters is, haha, they're creepy or they're flamboyant. There's no in-between gay character. 
there's just in films sometimes with these particular filmmakers with Ben Stiller and Will Ferrell and all these people, the joke is, ha, huh, they're gay. Or, ha, huh, they're gay and creepy. Or, ha, huh, they're gay and very feminine. And that's it. Like, there's no in between. I have no problem with the feminine ones because I've been noticeably feminine myself. Really? I, oh, wow. Yes. I've got a anyone, real masculine vibe. If anyone could tell. Um, but, ah, uh, hmm, hmm. With these ones, this one not so much because I feel it's so innocent. Yeah, yeah. But uh, give, give me more examples. Like, point, well, out, point, point me out one and I'll say. I, I guess we'll sit down and just list off the whole. Well, but do you excuse it to. Would you excuse it because of the time period? Because it's no, set in the this 70s? Is, this, this, no, well, because the film wasn't made in 1970. No, but the film set in the 1970s. There is a bit where they call someone a nipsy. They could, like. <laughs> They call him Huggy, Huggy Bear a nips. Vince Vaughn calls him a nipsy, which is pretty racist for the times. So, like, you know, like, is it? Do you, would you excuse it because on that level? Well, no, like, because the right. If you really believe it's homophobic, you'd you'd have to say, well, then why did you choose to write a scene in such a way that would have that homophobia presented? But then you also go, these people are terrible people. <laughs> With robbing dead bodies, <laughs> <laughs> and and. Wanting to shoot a child later on when, in their defense, the child all, was throwing knives. All, haven't we all wanted to do that at some point? Yeah, that's true. What about you, Bartek? I've never wanted to shoot a child. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're back here with Snoop. Snoop Dogg. I love Dog. that shirt. Speaking of homophobia, that shirt is just divine. Well, divinely homophobic? Big Earl made it. <laughs> Big Earl made it. And he loves dragons. No, we're talking about the shirt, not the vest, right? Oh, sorry. I was getting on the vest. I was looking at the dragon. No, that's a great... I, You know what I love? I love the idea that Snoop Dogg doesn't even have a wardrobe for this. He just comes up in his own clothes. <laughs> well, speaking of that... coming up with his own stuff... The you car. Go. Thanks. <laughs> You're going to elaborate on that more? Yeah, but I thought you were going to react. Fuck you, Ryan. Look, <laughs> they wanted a certain kind of car and they couldn't find it because it's really rare or something. And Snoop Dogg's like, hey, I happen to have that ki- this exact car. And that was it. Yeah, they used it in the movie. Whoever they did the casting do very well. The trivia for this movie I find very interesting. <laughs> There's like Ben Stiller. You know, he as much as you can say, oh, you don't like Ben Stiller, you can never deny the fact that he really puts in 110% in his movies. With like he 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 is an actor that's a method actor on a level. He changes his body. Like you have a movie where you have Zoolander where he's pretty ripped, and then you have a movie like Meet the Parents where he's just an average looking dude. And like he changes his appearance, but he learned to be a stunt driver for this movie to do all the stunt driving, and he didn't get past it. Like he did really well, but they used stunt a professional stunt driver anyway. But it's like he put in the effort, you know. While Owen Wilson's just like, I got my blonde hair. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> like that's it. He like, plays guitar. Oh yeah, but you know that's just Owen Wilson's natural ability. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this sequence here, yeah, which is also in the trivia as like a callback to a poster or like an event in the original TV show where they're wearing holst- the shoulder holsters and hand towels. So this isn't like some lame throwaway joke. That's like a reference, and that's a good kind of joke. It's a referential I, joke. I just don't know why we have to see Minetti with his shirt off. What, you don't like Minetti? Minetti, not so much. And Vince Vaughn previously was... Are you invaded. sure you're gay? <laughs> 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 now, the captain. Mm. <laughs> the captain? Yes. You know what? He is actually pretty fit for, like, a 60-year-old man. Some people are into that. Look at him. He's really fit for, like, a yeah. 60-year-old man. You could Better be... than Minetti. Minetti's fit in a weird way. <laughs> like, if you yeah. stacked a bunch of mud... <laughs> that's, he's kind of... yeah, with, with all the talk of sit on it, no, you sit on it, I was surprised no one made a fat joke. I was really surprised that that didn't turn into a lot gayer of a scene. Because yeah. <laughs> he jumps up in a hand towel and Minetti cups his ass. <laughs> I thought the towel was going to come off and there's going to be butts. Like, I thought it was going to be like, oh, they're fighting in a men's bathroom with towels. <laughs> Someone's going to get their towel off. It's going to look gay and it's just going to happen. But no, this movie saw that homophobic stereotype and went, you know what? Nah. Not going for that Not one. Not going for no. that one. Too easy. Let's go for fake mustaches. And leather pants. Um, so, Bartek, did you have a favourite character in this film? Anyone who shined for you? Favourite character in this film? Oh, it's... It's hard to say. I mean, I like Will Ferrell a lot, but uh, 
I might have to give it to Snoop Dogg. I, I'm sorry, Huggy Bear. I loved Will Ferrell. He was my favourite. I forgot he was in this. And then, you know, it came the scene and I actually paused the movie and I like to do this. My girlfriend was watching and I'm like, oh, I know who's going to be in this. And I'm just like, I know. And I do that thing where it's like, okay, what comedian do you think is going to be playing Big Girl? And then she was like, oh, I don't know. It's like, come on. It's someone that has to be in this movie and you'll just be like, oh, of course, I should have known that he was going to be in this. And you know, it's like, I don't know. And then then you just see Will Ferrell and you're like, duh, of course. That was my experience This too. movie was just like, it was leading up to Will Ferrell being in it, if not John C. Riley, Like, one of them do. One I, of the I was, stepbrothers. I was surprised I didn't feel like, I was like, oh, who's going to play Big Girl? And then Will Ferrell was like, of course it's Will Ferrell. Like, it's either, like, Will Ferrell or or no one. <laughs> really? Like, you know, it's like, just an empty chair they talk to. No, Big Girl! It's just like, no one's there. No. It would have been great if Big Earl was Jerry Stiller. <laughs> 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 and, and he said in like that really calm way, he just goes, Now you blondie. <laughs> you know how ben Jerry Stiller says, how he talks in that accent and, that he has, that he just, when he's talking very calmly and quietly, being really precise, he just, he would just be like this, Now blondie, be a dragon. <laughs> and then he's like, what? And he's like, I said, be a dragon! <laughs> I said, be a dragon! I love my favourite little bit is about to come up. Now, before I said I had a favourite bit, this is my favourite bit coming up here where they're asking about his height. Uh, Like, he's like 5'9", is that not big, blah, blah, blah. Watch Owen Wilson's face. Now, considering the scene, it's just something. I'm going to point it out. There's a bit where they're like, they're like, uh, uh, you know, like, oh, he's just average height. Owen Wilson, they cut to like just the you know the the far away shot of both of them, and Owen Wilson's doing something that makes no sense for the scene, mm. and it's obviously like something happened before the scene happened, got like before they went take, and they just like keep it in. Okay, is, is it coming yeah, up? we're waiting. For, there it is. He's just laughing. What's he <laughs> laughing at? Like they just cut to him, and he's just like clearly laughing at something but the scene doesn't require laughter it's just like yeah his average height like that it is laughing it's like <laughs> it's like i feel like before they went like action ben stiller said something or leaned over and it's just like they just caught him laughing and just went you know what let's keep that in no one's gonna notice that well guess what it's been over 10 years and i noticed <laughs> i've been noticing for 12 years Ooh, and that wasn't even on the trivia that wasn't even in the goofs <laughs> that was me hitting my fist angrily. He's really invested in this part. I really like the bit too where they're talking with that guy and halfway through the conversation the guy's like, Hey, that's a fake mustache! And then they get into a fight. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of um, the whole laughing thing when uh, in the first Wayne's World movie there's a part where uh, Wayne is lying down on his car at the airport mm. and like... He does this laugh, like and but like pauses between the laugh and every now and then. Apparently, the guy that played Garth was like telling him jokes on the side to make him laugh. Good stuff. Yeah. Now, everybody's favorite scene is this one, right? Yes. I think we can all agree, Sam. I you, think so. Yeah. Sam, you know, would you be Big Earl? <laughs> would I be Big Earl? <laughs> yeah. No. If you went to prison. No, I don't think I would be as collected as Big Earl seems. To be. <laughs> he seems <laughs> really like. To be, fair, well. supportive? Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, Ryan, I think you'd have to be Big Girl because it's not an ironic thing that he's big, he actually is tall. Yeah, Will Ferrell is tall, <laughs> so I guess I would have to be Big Girl. I really wanted to be Vince Vaughn's daughter at the bat mitzvah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise, like, I, I, you know, like they emphasise bat in, like, bat mitzvah. Bat mitzvah. Yeah, it's this a, is my daughter's yeah. bat mitzvah. I'm like, yeah. they, but they never just say, oh, it's my daughter's bat mitzvah. It's like, my daughter's bat mitzvah. Yes, I, now, did, I did notice that. Apparently they kept making, like, mistakes, because I think they did say bar mitzvah a few times. Oh, uh, idiots. On the phone with Big Earl, actually, I think he said bar mitzvah. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's got a little brown sugar. A little more brown sugar. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to listen, and then suddenly, oh, well, Bill's belly. So, oh. Sam, you're into guys. Does Owen Wilson's belly button get you? Not particularly. Does Owen Wilson get you? No, not particularly. Who's the guy that gets you in this? In this? Oh, the, the captain. Ca- Minetti. Yeah, the captain. <laughs> they, we'll go with the captain and be, uh-uh. be sorted. Actually, Snoop Dogg does actually have some vague 
feminine attraction in this film. He's tiny. He's a yes. little man. He's all slender and delicate, but I'm tough. Oh, an interesting so you, combination. You, you want to be the tough one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it'd be a change. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's, <laughs> me being you the know, tough one has never happened. You know, the funny thing is, he may be physically slender, but he is a gangster, so you'll never yeah, be I the know, tough exactly, one. Yeah, I know, exactly, that's what I mean. I like, like that. You'll be like, I'll be tough, and then Snoop Dogg's like, yeah, honey, and he's just like putting a cigarette out on his, <laughs> chair, on his own chest. And he'll be like, yeah, you be tough. <laughs> And then, and then he'll just be like, "Yeah, you're the tough one," and you're like, "Yeah, me, the the like early twenties <laughs> white boy, like the one who <laughs> isn't the D O double G, yeah, yeah. S- Snoop Doggy Dog, Snoop Doggy Dog." <laughs> so why did he give up that name? I wonder. <laughs> he just gave Snoop Dog. So guys, we said this is probably the best scene of the movie for us. It must have taken you know many many days to get it just right. No, right? Just, no, no, not no. at all. I don't think. No, what about you? Want to so guess right? how long it took to do this? Every everything. <laughs> this particular scene. Yeah. An afternoon. An afternoon. Yeah, that's probably an right. Afternoon. An afternoon of they frolics f- and delight. Filmed all of Will Ferrell's scenes in one day. He just rocked up and was like, "All right, let's do this." One he, day Ferrell. One day Ferrell. Well, he's, <laughs> he's uncredited in the film, according to Wikipedia. Yeah, it is yeah. true. Uh, it's because he was too big to be in this. Like. Big, big, big girl, girl is too big, is too big. <laughs> and he's not very memorable. <laughs> what? He's clearly the best. I love. There's a scene later where he's on the phone to Vince Vaughn, and he's just like, "What are you wearing?" <laughs> and Vince Vaughn knows this guy, and he just tells him what he's wearing, and then goes, "Why did you need to know?" Oh, you creep! <laughs> like, like Vince Vaughn was like. Throughout this movie, Vince Ford's actually really smart. Like mainly because Jason Bateman, who's also in this movie, might I add. Yeah, he's that. He's. He, he, I refer to him as. Oh, he's that guy. Yeah, you know the guy from Arrested Development. Yeah, it's that guy. Yeah, yeah. it's like he's in this. And Vince Ford's actually been really smart. And they actually comment on how smart he is, but how arrogant he is. And I just love with that scene. It's a moment where a character's dumb. For no explanation. Like, doesn't add up to the character type, but it's great. Where it's like, Will Ferrell, who is clearly one of the dumbest characters in the movie, like, in a good way, uh, outsmarts a smart guy <laughs> by not trying. Like, he just goes, what are you wearing? And Vince Ford's like, well, I'm wearing, like, a, a green shirt. With, like, he doesn't even go, why do you want to know first? I would do that. <laughs> no, no, I, I think he goes, why do you want to know? A green shirt with flowers. Like, I think he actually goes, why do you want to know? And then tells him anyway. Like, he doesn't get an answer. I love the chief's tie. I just noticed that, yeah. It's, like, really gentle. <laughs> <laughs> on, such such a, a, on such a bear of a man. <laughs> Is he a bear? Mm. He's not he hairy. Was, no, no, he was hairy. He had he slight hair on his chest, but not he much. Had, not as much as you. All right, well, yes, I am a manly and rugged creature. Yeah, especially in comparison to Snoop Dogg, <laughs> <laughs> who is a slender, smooth man. Yeah. Black don't crack. <laughs> He's like seventy years old, <laughs> which means the chief is like a hundred. Oh, the chief. The yeah. chief is great. I wish he was in more movies, but he plays. Wouldn't it be great if he was in, if he was in a movie, right? Such as um, Twilight. Say if he was in Twilight and he just played Bella's dad. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen Stewart's I, I, <laughs> like, But he plays it like the captain. <laughs> <laughs> that would make the film more bearable, certainly. What I want to see is a movie about all the tough black cops from all these movies. <laughs> all together, meeting. Yeah. And then Shaft is there. <laughs> He's like, Isaac Hayes. The guys from every... the Die Hard movies. Oh my god, all of them are there. All of... Samuel Jackson yeah. in every movie and ever. They, they, they all just like have to like size up their length against each other in terms of their tough black copness. What was that Samuel Jackson movie? I think it was like a thriller where he was like the next door neighbor to this new couple and he was like an LA cop and he was just like stalking the fuck out of them. <laughs> I think it was like called Lakeview Terrace or something. <laughs> and he's like the whole thing is like he's the psycho and every time they call the cops, he will just respond <laughs> because he's a cop. <laughs> I haven't watched it, but that's like the general impression. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's Now, majestic. Sam, you can draw, apparently. Mm, oh, no, is that good drawing? Y- yes. Could uh, you it's draw certainly as... more realistic on Wilson face than I could have. Could you it. draw like that? Oh, here it is. Like, this is the scene <laughs> here, here where comes he our asks favorite, him. Our second favorite scene. Also, he's got like one of those <laughs> phones in his car. <laughs> yeah, he's got like a landline phone, not like a... Landline, but like with a twirly... Like, yeah, wire. I don't know what's... 
I don't know what's happening, and I just love Vince Vaughn is great in this movie. He's just like, don't shush me, don't tell me to calm down. He's just like, Will Ferrell is like responding like, calm down. I love, what am I wearing? Silk flower shirt and vest. Why? It's just like this going. <laughs> 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 the moment of pause where he realises that he's dealing with a fucking pervert and Will Ferrell just goes god some people right like you're yeah, poor Will Ferrell yeah, this is also a great moment where yeah. Carmen Electra tries to act and it's beautiful <laughs> do you have any uh, feelings towards the female characters Bartek do I have any feelings towards the female characters yeah do you feel like they are characters I know they're female. I, mean, I couldn't even call them the girls in the movie because they're in like three scenes. <laughs> I mean, I can see them, so I guess they are. <laughs> they exist. They're, they're, they're in disguise later in the movie. Yeah, that's true. They get involved in the police work. Um, Do you have a favourite character, Sam, in this movie? I forget. Did we, did we find no, out? No, we didn't. You... I, I would have to say Snoopy or maybe his... His Snoopy, Snoopy, maybe one Snoopy of his, and his friend Charlie. Yeah, I, I do. I, now that you mention them, I totally f- didn't know who they were. I do quite enjoy his bodyguard. You're all wrong, by the way. Oh, clearly the best character in this movie. Well, but we're saying our favorite, not the best. Okay, your favorite, my favorite. You're all wrong. Uh, do you want to take a stab at my favorite character in this movie? You already said Will Ferrell. Nah, so. he's all right. But I've actually we're past his scenes. We, I, yeah, that's a problem. He's only in a few. But the guy I love the most is Patton Oswalt oh, as the oh my God, DJ I guy he's in this film. <laughs> as like the disco announcer guy. Oh that's right, just like yes. Doing I all changed of my the... answer. <laughs> See what I mean? Like once yes. you remember, you're like, oh, I changed. Patton like, Oswalt is delightful in everything he's ever done. Yeah, I mean, this thing's like he's in Ratatouille, <laughs> and then he's in this. <laughs> like, you know, there's a spec, and he's in King of Queens again. I think of him in a, uh, what's the, about the chick with the dissociative identity thing. I don't know. Secret Life of, no, not Secret Life of, United States of Terror. Oh, he's in that? Yes. I haven't watched that. He's the, the slutty sister's husband thing. Wow, that's nice. Mm. Uh, I think of him in a movie with Simon Baker called, I think it's like Sex and Death 101 or something in which Simon Baker goes to this scientific program or something or other, and Patton Oswalt's a scientist. Yeah, that amuses me. <laughs> and he says he's got a list of all the people that Simon Baker's going to have sex with before he dies. And it's like 101 more people. Hmm. And he's it's a really interesting movie in concept because it's like, well, he thinks, oh, I'm just going to find these people and have sex with them all. And then when I get to the end, I'll find the woman who I'm going to get with. But then they're like, yeah, but you could die? <laughs> like, like you could be like you have sex with her and then you die like we don't know the science and Tom Baker gets really depressed about it and Pat Oswald is like hey man I wish I could have sex with 101 women <laughs> and I'm like I agree but guys I want Wilson singing no guys Ben Stiller's <laughs> eyes are black <laughs> <laughs> I really thought they were going to extend this animated joke more like Animation you know, is fun in movies uh, that aren't animated. Yeah, like I thought they were gonna extend this joke a lot more, but it's just like that's it, and then we never see anything more. So, how do you guys feel about Owen Wilson's singing abilities? I thought he did really well. Ah, uh, he made me wet my pants. I was getting uncomfortable in acoustic guitar singing sessions in movies. Yeah. I saw The Conjuring two last night, and there was one in that, and I'm like, this was is really up- out of place. Was it upbeat? It was Elvis. Oh. And I'm like, so you've, be- been, you've been haunted by a ghost of horror. horror that doesn't dude. stop the king. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's the ghost of Elvis that's killing them. I don't the know. ghost of Elvis past. <laughs> but El- aren't ghosts of people who are dead? Yeah, well, that's why I said ghost of Elvis. Elvis's past. Oh, I see. More than one Elvis. <laughs> no, he's Scrooge, and he's getting haunted by past and future incarnations of himself. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Could you imagine Elvis's Scrooge? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> trying to convince him not to get fat and drugged up and dead. A Hawaii Carol. <laughs> <laughs> Humbug. <laughs> yeah, and he like, humble. and he'll just be like, you know, and you, and instead of learning anything at the end, he just makes better music. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I also just say that these people dancing right now is pretty much me. Any time I go out, that is exactly how I dance. To the club. Yes, I should go to the disco more. Often. He discos hard. He discos hardcore. I mean, Curly here, whose name in the credits I think was like 
the Raha Man <laughs> or something. I'm not joking. His name in the credits, the actor, is something like the Raha Man. And I find that amazing. Because it means that he's a real dancer. <laughs> so he was like a notable appearance in this movie. Yeah, yeah. And he's Pat Oswalt with his wig. With his like elderly mother wig. <laughs> George Costanza's mother. <laughs> now, George! I barely said in every high school drama costume cage has that wig in it. Yeah, well, you know, we can't all we can't all be Ben Stiller's perm. I love how he's like, it's naturally curly. As someone with curly hair, I call bullshit. Well, I've got curly hair, but you can never tell. Uh, yeah, but... I look yeah. like Shirley Temple if I go anywhere with some humidity. It's delightful. I just, I just look like a mess all the time. So he's curly dancing, and Pat Oswalt is really laying it thick with his commentary. In fact, we should just stop talking, and I'll just lay over what he's saying instead, and it will be better than anything anyone's ever done in a podcast <laughs> before. <laughs> like, he is really... It's, like, it's Wild Wild West. There's a six guns full of... What was it? What's it full of? Sexy. <laughs> the good, the bad, and the groovy, of course. Is one he's, of my favorites. He's got an encyclopedic knowledge of all the dance moves you can possibly do. Yeah, dancing rigs going. I don't like you, but I respect your moves. <laughs> <laughs> is he? Oh, and he's dropping the big disco rig. I love. We're learning the terms. Shift your gears. <laughs> all of it. It's just like this movie really helped me learn disco, which is what you really need in 2016. Well, hipsters are making disco come back, I'm sure. <laughs> True. I really like these shots of Pat Oswalt with the light behind him silhouetting. It's so, quite... is Pat Oswalt the guy that you would, you would have in this movie? Yes, now that I know he's here. So long as it's got that lighting around him. Like, like <laughs> lying on the bed, light behind him. Perfect. Yeah, so you're blind. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we don't actually have to see <laughs> And you wear glasses, it. so you can just take them off and be blinder. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, you're beautiful. <laughs> so... Dancing Rick was his name, right? Yes. He's got. Did you guys notice his t shirt that he's wearing? Like his button up shirt, what was on it? No. Okay. I was busy looking at his moves. Okay, you gotta look at his shirt. Come here, Rick. Come on, shut up, Patton. Just bring him in. There they are. So Rick has on his shirt uh, uh, a design that I think should come back in fashion, which is a face. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, like. Cartoon eyes, eyebrows, <laughs> a little dot for a nose, and like a like a line for like a mouth now that, that is a mouth that is kind of smiling and frowning. So I think we need to bring that back in fashion. Sam, you're a fashionable guy. You're wearing metal buttons. Um, metal buttons. You should bring this back. Uh, well, find me one, and I will have. No, make it. Oh, you can draw. <laughs> just find a, find a teacher. <laughs> so, do we ask the question why did Patton Oswald announce that Dancing Rick won? We already know Patton yeah, Oswald's gay for Dancing Rick. Definitely. We've already figured this out. Sam figured out with his gay dad that Patton <laughs> Oswald's clearly. It's, it's a really subtle like gay love theme that's running through this whole film. I feel. Yeah, that well, led up to that moment. Yeah, and Pat Oswalt is obviously infatuated with Dance and Rick to the point where he, he cheats. Yes, that's what I was asking for. Yeah, and I love Ben still is still obsessed with it. Like <laughs> he kind of snaps out of his coked out thing and goes, What was that about? And he, that angry voice I was talking about before where he kinda of sounds like he's fatigued. Where he's like, He cheated, right? Like, with his eyes. Do you ever look at people like Ben Stiller and get reminded that we evolved from apes? <laughs> <laughs> You've just now solved the thing that always haunts me at the back of my head whenever I see Ben Stiller, and now I know what it is. <laughs> Does he not remind you of a monkey? <laughs> he like, <laughs> That's what his Zoolander faces are. They're monkey I know, faces. But look at him here. He looks like such a little monkey. He's just so... <laughs> <laughs> well, Owen Wilson, I look at him and I go, I don't think we evolved from apes. He reminds me more of that we evolved from like. Elephant seals? No, I was thinking a turtle of some <laughs> kind. Like a turtle. His hair is kind of like lion mane. <laughs> yeah, but he's also like a shell. And his head is like a tortoise's head popping out, going, oh wow. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Him and Rob Schneider. Both remind me of we evolved oh, from a no, tortoise. No, I forgot that person existed. You clearly haven't watched Surf Ninjas. <laughs> um, here we have a great thing, which is a three-way, or threesome, or gangbang, 
Which term do you find more appropriate? Well, it really depends on the number of people. This would be a threesome. But is it not a three-way? No, I would say four will be a four-way. And uh, then any more than four, I feel, is an orgy. Well, obviously. <laughs> yes. Obviously. And then not a three-way kiss. Not that I'm an kiss. expert on orgies. They had to cut eight seconds of this three-way kiss so it could be PG-13 rating in America. <laughs> because if it went any longer... That would just it, be too much. It would be too much orgy. Not the amount of orgy that he got. Uh, I love that it's also never brought up again. Yes, no. I do like the whole transition to the eggs to be reminiscent of breasts. Oh, yeah. I was thinking it was more reminiscent of the fact that there was two women, meaning there was two eggs for him to fertilize in them. Layers (laughs) upon layers at this point. Eggs upon eggs. Guys, the eggs represent breakfast. (laughs) (laughs) I love that, Bartek. Thank you. Uh, we need to get reminded every now and then that this movie is a simpler movie. You see, the part that I think, Bartek, you can easily easily agree with me on this, is the part of the magic of the movie is that it is a simplistic concept. It, it, it takes the genre conventions and cliches and follows them 110%, but with a snicker. Yes. Not we're... like the snicker, the candy bar, the chocolate bar, but like like it's laughing like, <laughs> get it? Right? We're doing, we're doing the cop buddy thing. Mm-hmm. With breakfast. <laughs> How did you feel about um, seeing this? You know, in two thousand and sixteen. Mm-hmm. Do you think this is as aged well? Because that's the problem with comedies. Sometimes they just don't age very well. Well, the premise is kind of. Sort of ish, a timelessish one. If you if you want to do like a callback to a seventies thing, then really no matter what, nah, I guess the attitude would be reflected by the time it's made. But mm. I don't know. I still feel like this is a kind of a timeless movie. This movie is to a thing that existed in the seventies. I agree. Thank you. With breakfast, my favorite thing is that this movie really deserved a sequel called Chow and Hutch. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. We're like, good, good. Now you can be Chow and Hutch. I'm like, I would watch that. I would watch the fuck out of Chow and Hutch. <laughs> and they'll get that guy. And Chow's son is all grown up, and he's grown up to be um the guy from Hangover. You know the is oh, his name Chow as well in the Hangover? Ken Jeong character. Yeah, <laughs> he's just grown up to be him, but he's playing like a twelve year old boy. <laughs> I love movies where they have characters that are supposed to be children and they're played by like full grown men. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, that is always fun. He reminds me of the guy from Old Boy. I want his rainbow suspenders. Oh, Ryan. What? Ryan, Ryan. You just said this thing that's making me think of the story of Ricky again. <laughs> <laughs> Bartek loves this uh, movie called Story of Ricky. I've mentioned which it on the You show need a few all times. to check out. Sam, before we did this episode, you recommended to me a movie. What was it? Dead Rising? Deep Rising. Deep with, Rising. Uh, Treat Williams and Famke Johnson. <laughs> Treat Williams? Yes, his name is, is Treat. <laughs> is he a treat? Uh, yes, he's actually quite amusing. If you've seen <laughs> The Phantom, the wonderful movie with Billy Zane, he plays the villain in that. Oh, well, I, well, I love him. He stabs people's eyes out with a fucking yes. telescope. But Deep Rising <laughs> is a great movie by the guy who made the mummy movies really yes so it is actually good yes and I like it's got mummy the guy from the mummy who's like what's that benny the one with the like the i bears. love benny he's in it as well and they go on a cruise ship and they get attacked by a giant squid monster and it's horrific and delightful and I feel could like this horrible. movie have oh, done more successfully with general mass if there was a giant squid monster in it bartek Was that in the original 70s theme? No. They need the beef. There could be one. No, that's what the and is. It's a squid. (laughs) Well, okay. So if it's not, then it's obviously not a homage. Then it would be a... It would be a social... A reimagining. A reimagining, yeah. It would be like a social look at um, how we view this film from a modern day perspective. Like, yes, Starsky and Hutch... It could exist today if it had a giant squid monster. Yeah. (laughs) What I actually feel this movie would need today is more, like, inexplicable violence. Yeah, right. Like, gratuitous blood. Yeah, (laughs) but it's still, like, this lame, like, this somewhat, like, like, sophomoric comedy. But then every now and then it'll be like, give me the answer! Like, butts someone's nose with the end of his gun and and blood spurts out. Yeah, or someone gets shot and their whole hand Yet again, this moment here where Ben Stiller nearly shoots himself in the head (laughs) is also quite (laughs) Brutal. 
<laughs> See, look, this is the scene where I'm reminded that we're all for monkeys. <laughs> I mean, like, when is Ben Stiller going to be in Planet of the Apes as Dr. Sayus? Yeah, but it would have to be like the old school Planet of the Apes where they had like the full mask prosthetic. Yeah, no, thing. no, no. I don't care. I think he would just be great in Planet of the Apes as Dr. Sayus, Dr. Dr. Sayus, Dr. Sayus <laughs> and he's just like, and he's saying it like in his angry voice. We just like, we just like, I'm just saying it. And his dad's playing by Jerry Stiller as well. Might I add, we need to do the Tim Burton Planet of the Apes because I forgot Paul Giamatti was in that movie. Okay. As an ape, and he breeds like a monkey throughout the thing. Like, Paul Giamatti's performance is this. He just is like, he's like, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, that's <Bless> good. <laughs> no, that was me breathing. Like, in the sneeze. <laughs> it was my thing. monkey breathing. It was my monkey breathing, yeah. So, this movie uh, really pushed boundaries, I think for the movies that were coming out then, because this is, you know, Ben Stiller in the in-between areas of his career. Like, I'd say this is in the lower part of his career. So you got Zoolander's at one end of his peak, and then Tropic Thunder. Because Tropic Thunder got him a a big recognition again. Like, it got Oscar nominated for stuff, and Tom Cruise was actually good in it. And well, Where does Night at the Museum fit into that? Because he got two sequels out of that. Yeah, but that lays in his lower echelon of things. That's what I'm saying. Like... What about you, Bartek? Do you do you think that uh, Ben Stiller, you know, has a height and uh, uh, you know, he like a peak and a low? Man. Or do you think? Thank you. His <laughs> hair's tall. Do you have like a, a top tier Ben Stiller and a low tier Ben Stiller? Well, certainly around this area where he was making a lot of these comedic movies, like Zoolander, this one, and various ones that you could point out. I feel like maybe that would be a peak because, you know, there were big things they presented at the Oscars in 2004, I believe. They presented the one that won uh, Harvey Crumpet. Yeah, obviously. Um, Sasuke and Hutch. (laughs) (laughs) Best picture? Maybe. I will say, I I don't know him as much as I would know other actors, but uh, I suppose around the time Night at the Museum, Night at the Museum was kind of a thing, family movie, mostly for kids. Like, my little brother loved it when it was released, and I thought it was all right. Yeah, I think... My brother loved the gum-gum line. (laughs) There's things about Ben Stiller I find fascinating as a director, because he'll do something like Reality Bites, which is kind of like a dramedy, and I don't like it, I hate Reality Bites, but you commend it, it's early work, Ben Stiller, and then you get something like Zoolander, where... That got panned when it came out. That was a box office bomb, but it is his greatest, in my opinion. Mm. And then you get, you know, something like Secret Life of Walter Mitty, where I didn't like it. I thought it was fucking great. I didn't like it, but I knew it was a good movie, and it's for whoever does like it. But then you get people like... Then you get his movies like where uh, meet the fuckers where you go okay that's 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 lower tier <laughs> but then you meet but the again, parents where you get meet the parents where that's high tier mm. yeah but then there's movies of ben stiller i don't know what's wrong with ben stiller he makes movies that people love at the time and then nobody talks about such as i don't know if you guys remember but do you guys remember how fucking quotable and loved dodgeball was yes and no one talks about that movie no. now and except, i wonder except the getting hit by the wrench thing yeah, that but still even comes up. even that, like Ben Stiller was like the thing in that movie that was the best part, and nobody talks about Dodgeball. And I wonder if we watch it now, if it holds up. Maybe that's why no one talks about it. I wonder. I mean, back then they did have Lance Armstrong comes in and gives a motivational speech about that you should never give up. I just want to <laughs> bit of context. Sorry, I find this scene really funny. <laughs> do you? Yes. Which part do you find funny? The pantomime. <laughs> no, I think it's the fact that uh, he talks. Like, <laughs> Owen Wilson goes, all right, I'm going to... I can't do an Owen Wilson impersonation, but he does that bit where he's like, all right, guys, I'm going to do the glass wall again. <laughs> I think I'll do the glass okay. wall again. Oh, wow. I love one of my favorite things is someone's like, can you imagine Owen Wilson as a Jedi? And it's like... <laughs> Turns on his lightsaber and he's like, wow. "Oh wow!" and a smiley face. <laughs> but I, I'm, again, this is me overthinking the, the plot logic of this film. I'm like, why did they think this was the best idea? <laughs> <laughs> who, who gave them the box? <laughs> <laughs> or the costume? 
So we've been talking about things. We've so talked about this. They already have, they have a we as a wig guy, the costume <laughs> guy. We've been talking for so long that I haven't actually gotten into the quiz that I did for this. Movie. Oh god, yeah. Bartek wrote to me before. You just wrote the quiz sucked. Oh, I, there were four, and they all sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. There were so many typos, and yeah. <laughs> but there are two two questions in particular that I like to talk about that had multiple choice answers. One of them was related to the disco scene. Yeah. It was what was the first line of the song that they danced to, and it was <laughs> <laughs> and it was four multiple choice answers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Wait, you haven't even heard the answers yet. Wait, can I just say something? Yeah. In context for listeners who haven't listened to the show before, and Sam, um, Bartek does online quizzes for these movies because some of the times they're crazy. And that is so hard that we the first quiz he did was for a movie called I'll Be Home for Christmas. And that had the hardest answers for a movie of a like, somewhat subpar nature. But this... Go on, give me your answers. Okay, so... What were the first lines to the disco Okay, song? so A. <laughs> a, was it, that's the way, uh, 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 I like it, uh, uh. Was it B, that's the way, uh, 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 I like it, uh, 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 uh. C, that's the way, ha, 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 I like it, ha, ha. <laughs> no! <laughs> Which one was it? I think it was B, which was uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't remember what D was, but it was something completely different. So I, forget it. <laughs> which one was correct? I think it was B. B, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh my god. Okay, we'll put in the guessing game of what was behind the door. I guessed, which is- I said horse. And my girlfriend said, oh, it's a dog. And I was like, wouldn't it be great if it was, like, a sex worker? <laughs> <laughs> well, a collection of immigrant children. Well, Ryan, this is where the second question oh my God. comes in. <laughs> is it going to be something like, it was hot? <laughs> it was, no, the question is, Jeez. what did Reese get, like, what was the surprise he had for his daughter? And, Do like, tell. There was, like, a, a, a pony, horse, pantomimes... Mm-hmm. Or cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was cocaine. Yeah. That's everyone's. I love cocaine. how Vince Vaughn plays this scene. Like, oh, jeez, like he's being Owen Wilson in this scene. Like, he's like, oh wow, I, I got to be nice to these fellas. And like, he le- did this. Dude. He leads his hand down and goes, "I got gotcha. you." And Owen Wilson reluctantly holds his hand. <laughs> okay, I will be honest. I don't like Owen. Will- I mean, I don't like uh, Vince Vaughn, but I do like what he does. In the terms of, he's an actor that will improvise something and it just works on camera. Like, I don't like the guy. But you know, I could tell for that little thing where he leans his hand down. He just thought of that on the spot. And there's a trivia that I like, which is Snoop Dogg. There's a scene with him and Snoop Dogg and he slaps Snoop Dogg. And Snoop Dogg just, you know, being a professional dog, um, he just goes on with the scene like Snoopy would. And then when it went cut, he wasn't expecting to be slapped. And he goes, what the hell was that? Because, you know, Snoop Dogg's not an actor. He's not used to that. So he wasn't used to the fact that Vince Vaughn was just going to slap him. And I think that's really cool. You know, like, look, I don't like Vince Vaughn, but he's someone that I know could do something good. Like, for me, I haven't found the Vince Vaughn thing. People tell me, oh, Wedding Wedding Crashes is the great Vince Vaughn movie. I like Wedding Crashes. I don't like Vince Vaughn in it, but I like Wedding Crashes enough. But I feel like Vince Vaughn is going to do something like a serious movie and it'll just shock us. Like, he has done serious movies before and he's not very good, but it'll be great if one day... I always support, like, comedic actors that will one day rock up and they do something that completely throws you 180 and you're like, holy shit! And wouldn't it be great if Vince Vaughn just rocked up in, like, a Spielberg movie (laughs) as the dad? (laughs) The dad. Yeah, Spielberg always has daddy issues. (laughs) Like, daddy wasn't there to see aliens, you know? (laughs) Hence, E.T. was dad. (laughs) And now we've got more shirtless Vince Vaughn, so that's just what we need. Do you not like shirtless Vince Vaughn? Uh, He's very no. flat chested. Yeah, just... he looks like a fat man, but then he takes off his shirt and he doesn't. Yeah, he's he's got a weird thing, but then you get the sunscreen on Jason Bateman's nose, and you're like, mm mm mm. Makes me very uncomfortable. I like Jason. Looks like he just stuck his nose into all that cocaine. And then here's Juliet Lewis. Mm-hmm. Just who, to remind you that she exists. That she is in this movie? That, that that just gets me. I like Juliet Lewis. Um, I, I you know, she's a weird 
looking actress, you know, I don't mean to be offensive in that way, but she has a very peculiar look about her. Like, she's never going to be playing the pretty girl, like the bimbo or like whatever. She's grabbed her face and kind of gone, and just yeah. brought her all the Ooh, features right. a little bit. Here's your scene. <laughs> and it has handcuffs <laughs> and, and guns. two guns. <laughs> and he puts it on top <laughs> and he's licking his fingertips he I love is. this this prostitute says like uh uh-uh. uh like she's just like don't have a good idea about what and shit and he didn't even do anything <laughs> I would have got it if he walked over and went wow what are you doing and she'd be like uh uh-uh. uh but he just like walked past just it's, oh this made me when laugh did this, so hard when did they have this character moment <laughs> I don't think it happened I think this is Ben Stiller thinking about the good times that could have been you know what I mean okay Ben Stiller always has a moment like that in every one of his movies where it's like an overly silly moment where he smiles and it's just so silly like in Zoolander he has so many of those moments such as he's I'm a merman merman (laughs) and you're like or like in Dodgeball he has like these kind of weird moments that just come out of nowhere and you just accept it because Ben Stiller when he's happy it makes you happy don't you think I think it would be because, and this pro- probably would tie into the whole thing of Sam realizing that he's an ape or something. Would be that when you think of Ben Stiller, <laughs> you, you <laughs> this is this is what I've taken away from this session. You realize that, <laughs> yeah. When you think of Ben Stiller, do you think of him as smiling? I think of him. I think of him as uptight. Yeah. So no, he's got like this kind of frown on his face. That's like his default, I reckon. Yeah. You know, Owen Wilson, he's got the wide-eyed, you know, wonder. Yeah. Ben Stiller, frowning basically. Yeah. So when you see him smile, it's different. I like a, I like a thing that happens in this scene where he nearly dies. I love that too. I love when kids nearly die. No, no, die. no, no, no. no. <laughs> I like his afro's reaction to nearly. <laughs> his afro's reaction. To look, look, look! It's it's in this shot right. He, yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> the Afro shakes a bit, and I like that. It shakes before he gets lifted yeah. off the ground. I love the fact that you noticed that. <laughs> I rewound. What, I rewound the film. I loved it. is the fact that Snoop Dogg reads to him. <laughs> Like I said, my favorite. He's character. the nicest criminal you've ever seen. <laughs> and I love how Hence, Huggy Bear, guys. I love how it's a whole thing about I'm not a snitch. They have no soul, and it's like you are. You're the worst kind of criminal. You're like in criminal terms, you're the doggiest of them all. <laughs> like I wonder if Snoop Dogg feels good about this project. Because I'll be honest, no, I'm being 100 percent real. I think Snoop Dogg is actually a genuinely good performer in this movie. Like, I feel I like... Yeah. His first scene, I was like, oh, Snoop Dogg. Right, Snoop- how the fuck did we not do a Snoop Dogg movie for Dog Month? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Snoop Dogg is a genuinely good performer in this. Like, I know he's not stretching outside of what he is or his persona, but I think he's really well directed in this movie because Snoop Dogg, you know, the man in the interviews and whatever, that's what we go off. He seemed like someone who would be hard to work with because he's so stoned and so kind of like, yeah, dude, you know, and he's so slow talking and whatever. But that could be a problem. But in this movie, he's energized and he gives a real charm. And, you know, there's a bit to him where, you know, he, he's, uh, he's really understood what he has to do in this movie, you know. He's like Ben Stiller really, un- they all really understand what they have to do. Like, I love Ben Stiller early on when he gets kicked out of the biker bar. He gives like that little speech to them where it's just like, <laughs> be who you want to be. Don't, don't, don't pretend. <laughs> like, and in this scene, he's like, I'm not crying. I haven't seen such an emotional case of not crying since Black Annie. <laughs> With <laughs> Jamie <Black> Foxx. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like to call it Blanny. <laughs> so, I haven't seen such an emotional case. So... Um, in the IMDb, IMDb has a goof section and this film was just piles and piles of anachronisms and I found it really funny that one of the anachronisms was of the tissue box in this scene. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to be like, an anachronism, he is crying. <laughs> <laughs> How can you care about anachronisms in a comedy film? It, it's not like, it's like... Well, a lot, a lot of them are like... Now yeah. I'm watching this tissue box. I'm like, what's it yeah, no, what, what about it is what's anachronistic? It? Well, this is the dumb thing. It's like the plastic holds up the tissue. That's it. 
Oh my lord, you don't know. Maybe a nurse is behind that desk. Like, <laughs> she uses a tissue. We don't. Oh my lord. Yeah, but the thing is, like, it's felt because this thing is set in the past, and obviously things from the 80s will appear. Like, this exists in the 80s. It wouldn't have been there in 1974. And I just found it weird that tissue is having that little plastic thing. Somebody like, really the knows their up. tissues. Yes. Yeah, someone knows their tissues. I will give it. No, as, as much as I've slammed Vince Ford, what I do like about Vince Ford is the air of not giving a fuck. He gives in every movie like he's really a guy that just walks in and you can tell like he's just blazed one up before he's got in there and goes you know what I'll do what the fuck I like Whatever. you can't stop me I'm Vince Vaughn there's a reason why I'm called the Vaughn <laughs> so Vaughn right. identity <laughs> this, this scene was foreshadowed earlier when he said sit on it yep. and he sits on it yep that's, really? ex- that's exactly it <laughs> I guess that's yep. it you're a one. Who took that photo of him underwater? <laughs> uh, and did they have cameras that could take photo underwater a, it, in the seventies? It was a merman, Ryan. Oh, I really love that in this scene. Ben Stiller breaks his own rules, which is he sits and puts food on his car, which is, which is really shit. great character, character development. Dev- Sam, you do writing. <laughs> one attempts. You've attempted to write. What is this technique called? Is it called an arc? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, that's geometry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm talking about biblical stuff again. Sorry, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> is that a character? I love how he's wearing knee-high socks. <laughs> and those underpants. <laughs> he's wearing knee-high. God, he's skinny. He's, he's like a baby. <laughs> yeah, like Not tubby, but like an underfed like baby. A 12-year-old who's grown into a man. It's like he hasn't hit puberty yet, but he has a <laughs> facial sure. hair. Uh, is, are there f- paintings of his body? I don't know. I thought that was a painting of Isaac Hayes. It does look a bit like Isaac Hayes. I think they're paintings of his bodyguards. Yes. He really loves his bodyguards, Sam. They love each other. And you know what's sad thing? It's huggy. Like we never He's huggy. S- we never see them again. Yeah. Do they not appear in one scene later on? I yeah, but they don't really have the characterization that we saw mm. earlier. You know what I mean? Like yeah. those guys were great. They're not the things that Sam loved about them. Yeah. You know, I love the fact that I can't stop looking at his nipples. Oh, now you've mentioned it. Now went straight to his nipples. <laughs> and they're like chocolate buttons. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And here he is, they chose the greatest outfit for him. They I've always wanted to see haircut. Snoop Dogg in an afro and white. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I just love this golf. Uh, yeah, well, he knows about the grass, so that's why he <laughs> gave him that golf club. Like yeah. that's what I interpreted from the scene. This is this is the follow through of the bodyguard scene where he knows things that one. Yeah, well, expect. you know, it's obvious Snoop Dogg knows a lot about grass. Uh, look, that's his reaction. Like, what the fuck? I slap. <laughs> I think there was a. I think there was a dumb question about like what does he know the most about? And I think grass. Answer, I think that was the answer. Yeah, grass. Oh, was it grass <laughs> or <laughs> grass? grass. Like, they just have different pronunciations of the word grass. I love that he grabs it and just lets it blow in the wind and that's, like, enough for him to go, yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, like, it's not like he brought the other type of grass and showed him, like, the difference of speed of the wind. Like, look at this. He goes, yeah, look, it's different to that Alabama creep and bend. And he's like, Georgian creep and bend, you know, blah, blah. Look, and yeah, yeah, it's lighter. Like, well, he got me. <laughs> yeah. And what happens if, what if, um, Vaughn was just like, yeah, well, this is an Alabama cigarette, lighter than those Californian cigarettes, just throws it in his face. Really, I'm surprised Vince Vaughn didn't do that, to be honest. Just bought out a cigarette on the already butted up cigarette thought, chest of Snoop Dogg. I thought you were going to say, what if Vince Vaughn pulls out Georgia grass from his pocket <laughs> and throws it off? And he goes, I have a dealer. Of grass, and he just like has it in his hand. He's like, "What do you think this is?" Grass seeds, you dummy. I love that Jason Bateman is just in this movie with a weak mustache. <laughs> now, here's something. You know the cocaine. We haven't even talked about his plan. <laughs> it's has really been... not in general. His plan is to import and sell and distribute cocaine that is manufactured to. To look and taste and like artificial sweetener, and it can't be detected by dogs. Yeah. And he's going to distribute this at a charity fundraiser where the police are. Because. 
Well, they because mentioned plot. They, didn't someone mention because he's arrogant? Yeah, yeah. Ben Stiller yeah. mentioned because he's arrogant. But like, why did the other drug dealers agree on this? <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? They're they're businessmen. You know, Sam. If I was Vince Vaughn and you were, I don't know, Terry Crews, <laughs> um, and I said to you, "Yeah, we've made this Guinness Book, you know, artificial sweetener cocaine. We're gonna distribute this at a police charity ball. How do you feel about that?" Not positive. Uh, it's a great business plan because because it'll be like cocking in their face. We're not gonna get. I mean, we might get caught, but could, it's could worth that the cockiness. Go wrong? No, no, not at all. I mean, we've got two no. guys investigating us, but uh, you know. Fucking <laughs> who, who we know have good disguises. Yeah, fuck well, they it. got kicked off the force. You know what's something I really want to hear you talk about, Bartek? And I, I okay, there's some things I do say. When I watch these movies, I just go in my notes. I actually do write Bartek's gonna talk. Like I want to hear Bartek talk about this, which is the chief or the captain, sorry, at this charity ball. Yeah, because he seems like a completely different character. <laughs> he does he does? <laughs> also, I didn't realize that he was gonna be there. And Me there's either. no other policeman there, <laughs> so why is he there? So I would like to hear your thoughts on the cap in this whole entire sequence where he gets shot to him laughing <laughs> and dancing to everything he does. Because I find it fascinating, but I've always wanted to hear your opinion on it because I felt like the chief was going to be your character. Well, I suppose the reason why he would be there is if someone's got to be there, why not make it someone who's a higher up like like him? The cap. The cap. But why? <laughs> How do you feel about how he's so jovial? I suppose... Uh, oh, to bring up that geometry we were talking about earlier, an arc. Giving the ca- the captain an arc. Some, some depth, some range. I mean, like, look, if he's just going to be angry, you know, superior officer the whole time... That's not really playing with the tropes of the, you know, 70s buddy cop things. That's just doing it. He's like Danny Glover in The Shaggy Dog, where when you see him outside of Tim Allen, he's a happy guy, but then when he's with Tim Allen, he's an arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just these two that make him very yeah, unpleasant. Yeah, it's like, outside of them, he's a really nice, upbeat guy. <laughs> like, if anything, like, a reporter will come in and go, Now, Captain, you're being honoured for being the nicest man in the city. How do you feel about this? He goes... Oh, I'm really pleased. And then he just sees these two and like, ooh! <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what I interpreted from this. Like, outside of them, he's a happy go lucky nice guy. And then when he sees them, he's just fueled with rage. So, so here, when he, they're talking Dude. to the girls, um, I was like, why are you talking in front of them? They're like, you're revealing a disguise. There's the, they're the I, girls. Yeah, I didn't realize that they're the girls. I had the exact same problem. <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Who the? Why the fuck are they talking in front of these women like this? Giving up their disguises? Are, just, are their disguises too good for you?" Yeah, I, yeah. I, I love how you can clearly tell it's a wig. <laughs> like, there's no, there's no maybe. <laughs> but like, there's no, there's no maybe with either of them. So apparently, <laughs> do it. Apparently, this character that was oh, in the Ben Stiller show, right? Yeah, apparently it's a recycled idea. And he was going to... Get this. You love Jerry Stiller. <laughs> this <laughs> this character... <laughs> there is, there's the happy captain. <laughs> the, the character of Do It was originally going to... Like, this character, Finkel, whatever, was going to be Maury's character in Zoolander. Like, <laughs> this character... That character was just going to be the exact same character, but played by Jerry Stiller, but then they just made him Maury. Jerry Stiller. They just made Maury in a different character. So he was going to be in Zoolander, but he just went, no, 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 no. I've got to save Finkel for <laughs> different we'll movies. We'll use for him again. So I'll be Finkel and we'll be like, do it. Oh, don't you love how the fact that he's just doing an imitation of his own father? <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about that? A positive, and I love the green, the green suit. I love the grey streaks, <laughs> which look so real on the raised parts of his <laughs> wing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, Jason Bateman, I don't know what he's doing in this movie, but he's got, like... You ever watched Batman 1989 with Jack Nicholson and Michael Keaton? A while ago. His physical performance is like that of Batman. Like, you know, in the full leather, you know, in the rubber outfit. You know how Batman can't 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 turn? That's what his performance is, but he's not wearing an outfit. (laughs) That's just... (laughs) That's just basically... And Jason Bateman, look at him, look at him. He's so stiff, and he's just like, he turns, and he's pretty much like Batman, <laughs> without the ability to turn, like, his neck, so he turns his whole body, and he turns his whole torso. I don't know what's happening with Jason Bateman. Maybe he had some kind of back problem. Bart, like, you've had back problems before. Mm-hmm. Do you... You're an expert. 
Tell me from this these moving images if he has a severe back problem. You're a doctor. <laughs> His face is not showing excruciating pain, so I think... Nor did yours. You were just showing smiley, happy Varto. Because uh, you... you're on the painkillers. Well, no. Maybe I was... he's on severe painkillers. I was Maybe he is, but he's still moving around to... He's acting, Bartek. I know, Ryan. Through the pain. But I was acting while in pain, too, and I was not as smooth as Jason. No, no one could tell that you were in pain except for you. You're a harsh critic on yourself. Dude, I watched the recording of it. I was clearly... Yeah, you're a harsh critic on yourself. Sam, if you watch a recording of yourself, are you harsh? Sam did see the Yes, because I have to hear it at work, and I didn't realise I sound so nasally and gay, and I'm going to have to listen to this, and I'm going to realise it again. Yeah, you are very nasally and gay. (laughs) (laughs) Does it annoy you? That you can come across so gay? Uh, no, because the one time a, a straight girl at a club tried to hit on me and I'm like, excuse me? Yeah, that's when she went, oh, sorry, sir. I'd been called faggot that night and I didn't care, but then she comes like, you bitch. How <laughs> dare you? What is... I love, I love that Vince Vaughn's like, well, you got me. I might as well just p- fucking fight you. Yeah, he immediately just goes from, oh, I might be able to get away with this somehow to <laughs> commit all the crimes. I love the chief has, like, one other policeman there, and the chief gets shot from Ben Stiller. <laughs> 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 the, <laughs> and then they lie to him. <laughs> the, dumbest, the dumbest thing I've seen in cinema. <laughs> like, look at this. He thinks, oh, I'm going to... What does he think to happen? He's going to Magneto the bullet? Spoiler alert, Magneto crippled James McAvoy by magnetoing bullets. He thought, like, what's that uh, Angelina Jolie movie where they can, like, they do Wanted. that? Where they bend Wanted. bullets? Yeah, they bend. But also with James McAvoy. Oh, fuck, really? Yes, he's the star of that film. Does he get crippled? <laughs> no, she shoots herself in the head with it. Spoilers. Does it bend into her head? Well, she spins it around the room, the, the round room, and it somehow comes Is she back the villain? Head. Sort of. Oh. They sort of all turn out to be villains. I'm either here. Spoilers. There, look. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Also, my dad, it's the most delayed being shot ever. Because <laughs> they cut from him doing it to a still shot of the cap standing there. And then... Uh! <laughs> yeah, Maybe it was a tra- It's like if I go like this. Bartek, you prepare to get shot. Ryan, it was a non-naturalistic uh! transition. <laughs> where... It, it, when it cut to the ca- uh, captain, it was a few seconds before. Yeah, the it was a time fired. transition. Oh, well, obviously, this movie's like Inception. <laughs> I mean, if there was ever a movie that inspired Inception, it's clearly this one. Also, this one plays around with time. Also, did you notice that they told the captain that uh, Reese was the one that shot him? Yeah. Yes, they, they lied. They to lied. Him. That, that is a you know tie-in to Dickie Roberts, where Dickie Roberts never admitted to. Uh, that director, what's his name, Rob Reiner, that he, that did he it? was responsible for, for his heart attack, for the, for being attacked by the person who was angry that their car was damaged. This movie is very multi-layered. I mean, this movie, it's it's an emotional film. Why I say it's emotional is it's a comedy that is just a straight out and out comedy. You know, it's Ben Stiller. You know, does at times do that he does a comedy that's straight out and out comedy or he does a comedy that has some emotional scenes in it like has character development character arc this movie is straight out and out comedy and it turns around and mocks those comedies that try and have a message try and have character development try and have an arc yes it has all those things but it mocks it it's just like my mum said that I couldn't handle the (laughs) horse power (laughs) it's a clear joke at that kind of thing. And I love this ice cream guy's is like, fucking show me your badge. <laughs> show him your gun. And he's just like, shoot him. They shoot as well. That's like the best part. They could have killed him. I, I feel love, like you know, be some arrests. there's no points. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes in comedies, I do get a bit annoyed when there's like, oh, we've got to have an emotional scene. Sometimes I just want a straight balls to the wall comedy, and this movie delivers that. I'm not saying the others don't. There's a time and a place, but sometimes I just want a movie that's just jokes. And, and this be, is it. To be fair, I think the equivalent of that in this scene, Ryan, is A, the uh, Ben Stiller beach scene where it's like the, the crazy thing he always does in every movie. Mm. And also when he goes to see the grave and you see that it's very police themed, like, you know, <laughs> the handcuffs, the guns, and the donut. donut. Yeah, exactly. I love it. I love it. And it's like, he does that. He goes from, say, Meet the Parents, which has emotional scenes in it, 
you know, good scenes, but it's a comedy still. And then you have things like this and Zoolander, where it's just all silly. Like, there's no point in Zoolander where you're like, oh, no. It's like, ha, ha, ha. And Zoolander 2 still does that. Good. I've, I've yet to... Look, I'm scared of Zoolander 2 because I love Zoolander 1 so much that I'm scared of seeing Zoolander 2. Yeah, so I neglected to see it myself. I saw it and I loved it. Uh, yet again, it could get a case because I haven't heard good things about it. You, you're the one, Bartek, but overall it's been, it's been panned, but so does Zoolander well, 1. See, I just wouldn't be happy because it doesn't have Mila Jovovich in it, does it? The second one. She's does it Katinka have Katinka Ingeborg? Does it have no. Andy Dick dressed up <laughs> as a masseur? Well, I'm pretty sure Amelia. She's the one with the really weird name, right? Katinka. I'm pretty sure she's in it. Is yeah. it good. She, well, then I might invest it because I have a thing for Amelia. Now, Sam, you you were telling me that you have a uh, uh, who was the woman from Deep Rising? Oh, Famke Johnson. She's number three on your list of. No, she'll be number. She'll be number four. Oh, you said number, uh, number three. three. There's, you said I, number I, three on your list of women who you may give it a go. Okay, yeah, that's a different list. So now we're thinking about different lists. Yeah, she'll be number three on my would possibly give it a go. Who's your number one? Kylie Minogue. Minogue? Yes. The gayest choice of yes. them all. Yes, that's exactly where I'm I going. I mean, you might as well be having sex with a boy. But see, here, but see <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing about this, is that I would have sex with a lot of celebrities just to be able to say I did. Yeah? Who's yeah. your number two? My number two is Sarah Michelle Gellar. Oh, okay. Weird, good, because yes. you would but love like, our Scooby-Doo episode like, because inten- Bartek loved her boots. Yes, I would love that too, but like Cruel Intentions, Sarah Michelle Gellar. I have Jules that, that's too. on our list. Oh, oh my God, yes. that's. Oh my God, that movie is so sexy. That movie is sexy. Well, I think we've got to get lined up for it then. Uh, yeah. We've got, I let's... Luke. Uh, Luke. Luke. <laughs> <laughs> so this scene really reminds you that this is a set. <laughs> and that Owen blue. Wilson looks like a tortoise. <laughs> You wonder, you wonder what people look like when they're bald? This is the closest we're going to get to Owen Wilson. Because, like, his hairline is so far back. It is. But you don't realise it because he has a fringe all the time. Maybe that's why he has a fringe. Yes, that's why I had a, I have a fringe, more or less. Are you going bald, mate? No, no, I've just always had a tremendously balding hairline ever since I was about 12. Ah, uh, it's the stress. <laughs> the stress of puberty. <laughs> it was the stress of not realising that you should have, you know... Have seen this movie and remembered it more in the often. cinema. It should it should get into the regular rotation of films that I watch. Juliet Lewis is great because she's playing a bimbo, yet she looks nothing like a bimbo. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, like if you got some like oh Pamela Anderson or Anna Nicole Smith or someone, you go yeah I understand why Vince Vaughn's dating this chick, Electra. but she feels like she should be a trophy wife. Yeah, but she's not even his wife. Yeah, I love this, and he's just like. Puts on the glasses and he's just like, yeah, this will do. And I agree. So, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, got a crack nail? Yeah. And that wasn't even... My God. It's like Carrie Fisher's crack nail. Oh, come on. She she said she didn't use that oh, nail boy. for crack. <laughs> she used that nail for something else. Oh, I love like Now the chief of the party. Hat, can, can we have this movie, but oh, just with Carrie chief, Fisher playing all the characters? Could we have this movie, but instead it's played by everyone in the Star Wars movies and Lando Calrissian <laughs> is Huggy Bear? <laughs> and Mark Hamill's Star Wars. But wait, we need another black character to play the captain. What other black characters in Star Wars are there? Clearly, you're forgetting about Admiral Akbar. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he die recently? Yeah, he was like 98 years old. It was like, a trap. <laughs> Can you imagine Admiral? And he's played by the puppet. <laughs> 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 and the chief Turn in your badge. <laughs> Turn in your badge. <laughs> 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 I'm sure there's more black people in Star Wars than well, just Lando Well, not, not, in, not in the original trilogy. Samuel Jackson? <laughs> Again, we would, no, we're would we not including those But there's two. only two black characters in this movie and his bodyguards, and they could be played by, you know, stormtroopers. And and, and there's also some... James Earl Jones. There's also some Asian characters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm just imagining Tom James Earl Jones in that father. outfit. Who's Vince Vaughn's character in Star Wars? Oh, uh, uh, it's gotta be Greedo. <laughs> I like Greedo. And, um. Not one of those British. Yeah, Imperial I was thinking of a British Imperial Admiral officer. Admiral Pyatt or whatever it's Peter Cush- yeah. Peter Cushing as, as General Tarkin. <laughs> Moff Tarkin, thank you. Uh, he's General Moff Tarkin. Grand Moff Tarkin is his actual title. You know what I love about him in that Star Wars movie? He's wearing slippers throughout the whole time <laughs> movie because the boots they got were too small. I'm just really... <laughs> so can imagining you imagine him Grand Moff Tarkin's that. just like, 
we're going to blow up your planet. And then it zooms out wearing like bunny slippers. I want, I want to be comfortable on my battle station. Do you find it great that Grand Moff Tarkin is the most confusing villain in the Star Wars films? Because so? he's the only one that Darth Vader is subordinate to. Yeah, because originally Darth Vader just was just the lackey. The whole joke, the whole thing is... Grand Moff Tarkin's like the only one that Vader is is, uh, is leashed to. Like the whole mm. thing is like you have Vader on your leash, and Vader is on his leash, yeah. and then the only other person is the Emperor, which you understand. So that's why I mean he's the most confusing character because there's no reasoning for why Darth Vader would bow down to this guy. Because Darth Vader wasn't a character until Empire. Yeah, but like you know, obviously, death of the author, mate. <laughs> Every time. Don't you like how they're wearing the same outfits? Mm-hmm. By the way, Sam, there's yes, a star I, 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 it, Yeah, I, I no, got I'm that kidding. as soon as it appeared. No, no, I'm kidding. See this guy? The one that's obsessed with the car? You know who he is? Huggy Bear. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> and the last scene you see of them is him holding his hands over his head. And that's, much... You know, that's a critique of the movie. <laughs> like, just holding pic- our heads in our hands. No, a picture of him doing that and it's like five stars. <laughs> that should be the, the thumbnail. Uh, you yeah. mentioned earlier the 21 Jump Street movie. They did the same thing with having the main characters appear. Johnny Depp only agreed if they killed him. Because <laughs> he hates 21 Jump Street oh, Johnny. Yeah, more than anyone else. Yeah, Johnny Depp, young Johnny Depp was just Elm Street for me. With, uh, his, with his crop tops. I like Crybaby. Oh, I love that. Oh, I haven't seen that in years. So that's young Johnny Depp for me. Oh, and the little t- the little tear. Oh my god, I'm gonna go download Cry. Oh, that's I mean, Sad's reaction. Oh, I love. He looks so dis. Okay, remember that, guys. Remember that he crashed into that because that's gonna be important later. Mm. So the movie's over now. Is there anything before we get into our reviews and whatever that you want to quickly talk about or mention, Bartek, first? Is there anything in this movie that's happened or anything that you you really noticed or really enjoyed or really want to just bring up? I think I managed to get it all out there. He, he got his load off. <laughs> and she's dead. We've never <laughs> seen Juliet Lewis again. <laughs> she's just trapped in the ocean. Yeah, they, See, look, oh, blue tail. Yeah. And he's not <laughs> he's having scared, it. He's scared of the iguana. Look, iguanas are mean. That's a reference, the blowing in the ear to the TV show, which is great. This movie really did try. What about you, Sam? Is there anything you want to mention? I feel like we've covered everything. We've so covered far. it all. I just, Sit on it. I, I do. Um, that I, still shot. I was thinking. I of did it a as wicked turn. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> I did just get the whole the whole feel with this that it wanted to be more adult than it was. Yeah, I think this was a movie that was thinking there was going to be a sequel. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Like, it's a sad indictment. Uh, and the villain in that movie was going to be someone big and villainous. Like, could you imagine, like, if there was a sequel and it turned out, like... His name's Captain Dobby. Uh, yeah, I didn't know. It's it Dobby. Dobby, Dobby? Dobby. Well, spelt it looks like Dobby, and now yeah. I'm just imagining Dobby. Wouldn't it be household. great if the sequel, Minetti, was the villain? <laughs> <laughs> and he's, like, a he's corrupt... He's got to get internal co- investigations And, and it, it turns out he's actually the best cop <laughs> on the force. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if there was a scene where you actually found out, like, he's a family man, best cop on the force... Like, he's a... You know what? He has his own TV show. <laughs> like, Manedian... Manedian son. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a whole backstory to why he thinks Sid it is, like, the worst thing you could say to a person. And, no, he has a whole backstory for why he doesn't like Starsky. <laughs> like, like, he has, like, my first day on the force, I saw Starsky, and I said, nice perm, and he never forgave me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fan fiction for Starsky and Hart. So, the film is over. We'll go through a quick fire reviews and a rating out of whatever we feel. Bartek, let's hear from you first. Okay. <laughs> okay. I didn't say it like freaking eel. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for saying me. Oh, okay, go on. This movie is Starsky and Hutch from 2004. I watched it in 2016. <laughs> That's just the setup, guys. So just, you know, just, <laughs> don't just, get too emotionally don't attached. Get too, don't get too excited. Don't get your applause ready yet, because that's just the beginning. No, seriously, this was a great movie to watch, because I really do like the Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson dynamic. Mm. It's just one that doesn't really pop off my head when I think of great duos. So whenever I do end up seeing a movie that has these two guys in it, it's always like... Of course, I forgot. These guys are fantastic. Like, there's even a whole robot chicken sketch 
making fun of like every single thing they'd done up to that point, which was great because they did a really good Owen Wilson impression that was more than just oh wow. Oh wow. <laughs> That's all we all we're confident in saying. Oh wow. Like if you see it there's one that was like, Oh yeah, this, you know, this is spaghetti, I've got spaghetti in my hands or whatever like that. But that's not this, because this is the 2004 movie. Fuck it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> 10 out of 10. No, no, no. Um, this movie, like we said before, it does look at the... I mean, and we have to just assume this is a thing, because none of us have watched Starsky and Hutch too much, or at all, that it does look at a bunch of 70s tropes from these uh, buddy cop movies, or just cop movies, and or buddy cop movies, shows. And cop shows. And it plays with them, and it also has a great cast, you know, say what you'll about Vince Vaughn, Will Ferrell, or any of these guys who I think they're all kind of like friends. Oh yeah, they're all friends. They're all friends. It said in the trivia, this movie stars four friends. <laughs> <laughs> like, these guys are friends. And I'm like, thanks. I suppose, yeah, that, that was like a quartet from like the 2000s decade that was like really popular. Like, I think... More so to the end of the 2000s and today, we've got the whole uh, Seth Rogen, James Jonah Franco, Hill. Jonah Hill, sometimes Michael Cera, sometimes the McLovin guy, that kind of thing. But, but they've got a much crazier vibe than these guys. These guys, they have a more, like you said, uh, they balls to the wall. Mm. They don't want to go too emotional because, like, all movies, a lot of movies do have, like, they go straight with certain things. But here mm. we've got we've got the donut on the grave. We've got handcuffs <laughs> and guns on the grave. We've got that weird thing with the beach, which... Well, was, that just, the, was that just a Ben Stiller thing? Or was that, like, a reference to the show? Yeah. No, I think it's just a joke. Like, they're running on the... Like, it's just a joke of the things of that time where it's like, yeah, to show a friendship, you just have them wearing matching shirts <laughs> and running in the beach in slow-mo, smiling. Shirts that say Starsky and Hutch. In a nice in, rainbow. In rainbow. <laughs> rainbow word art. So look, in conclusion, this film, it's just breakfast, as I said before. It is just being not that deep. It's just showing you a great film. And I think people could really appreciate that if they watch this and realise, oh, this really is just what we wanted all along. We just had such high expectations of it that we kind of were unfair towards it. Yeah. So if I have to give this film a rating... Which you do. I would have to give it... <laughs> kind of the point. To keep in mind Snoop Dogg, I would give it four shizzle... Out of that's the way, uh huh, ha ha, ha. <laughs> I like it, uh huh. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Sam, let's hear from you. Let's hear a review from you and a, a quick rating. Uh, quick rating. I quick. Feel. I didn't know why it's a quick rating. <laughs> Just a feel. rating of your choice. I heard crick rating. I feel be would be a Patton Oswalt times a Snoop Doggy Dog. Wow. Which, he's he's starting with a rating first. Yes, which equals something special. <laughs> I like the image of like you get Pat Oswalt's face plus like a letter plus sign more than Snoop Dogg yeah. and then equals a good time <laughs> I'm imagining a romantic comedy featuring the pair of them together <laughs> I know most of their dad do you have an OTP for this movie? oh clearly Big Earl and Dragons <laughs> Uh, overall, I feel like this film is in one way that I spent my Thursday night. Um, I was surprised at how many cedars and leeches there were for this film when I went to download it. So, Wait, you didn't buy it legally? Or I, I the... mean, I just checked it out because, you know, that's my research. I think it might be on Netflix. Check that yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> he paid for the Netflix. movie ticket. Yeah, 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 yeah back in the day. Paid once, twice, three day. times in his life. Um, it was a strange deja vu experience where I thought this is something that I recognise out of a lot of things but here it was um, Ben Stiller being Ben Stiller Owen Wilson being Owen Wilson I can't say it's my favourite of theirs won't lie won't lie but it is a classic <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't even go that far it's well a, it's an unappreciated it, masterpiece it's, it's definitely. a film that has been forgotten perhaps for us to have a chance to remind everyone of it yeah Thanks, Ben. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Cheers, Ben. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. 
I love that. He's like, it's a film <laughs> that <laughs> has been forgotten. <laughs> it's a film that existed. <laughs> oh, but I, I don't know. It's one of those things where I don't know why this has been forgotten as opposed to some of the other films. Yeah, that's they true. Have. They I don't have. know. I feel like maybe because there aren't there aren't as many. I don't know. There aren't as many of those scenes where you're like, ha, oh, let's go and quote this everywhere. I feel like it's a bit more visual. What are you talking about? I love that quote. That it's, I, love the, I, love, I love the quote. It's my daughter's bat mitzvah. <laughs> bat mitzvah. Oh, that's beautiful, Sam. Show me your belly button. You bring me a tear to the eye. Um, I... You know what? He's inspired me. If I had to do a rating, like if I get straight off the bat, if I had to do a rating, Bartek, if I had to do one, which I do. Yeah, just copy him. Why not, Ryan? Go ahead. I'm a copycat because this movie, it is so good that, you know, it's your typical, the rating is out of Alabama star skin, Hutch. This flies a lot smoother and quicker than your California star skin, Hutch. That's my rating. Okay, and why Alabama? <laughs> because that's what he said in the movie. He said, yeah, Alabama. We just watched the movie. You're not getting the references already. <laughs> <laughs> no, is, is this why it's I realize, I realize yeah. he's talking about the grass, but I don't remember him saying Alabama grass. He said Alabama and Georgia. crawling bend or whatever. Fuck it. Bend over because you guys are going to get a full dose of my review because this movie is sensual. It captures the 1970s love. It has the aesthetic values. It looks like it's from the 70s. And it takes the things that we understand of the 70s media and content and turns it around. It gets people that you wouldn't expect and makes them likable in a different way. I don't like Vince Vaughn, but I liked him in this movie. Juliet Lewis, I like her, and now I love her. Snoop Doggy Dog, Slender, <laughs> Slender, Snoop Doggy Dog, although Slender, he fits in just right. I just love of all the movies to make you love Juliet Lewis. This is the one. Not the one where she was the star, where it made a big wait, wait, impact wait, 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 wait. on pop culture. What do you mean? She's a star of this. <laughs> She's really the narrative thrust of the so, film. This movie really touched me to the core. Why is it unappreciated? Only time will tell. I think that we're still too close to when this came out to really figure out why. Because this comedy style is still prevalent today. You brought up Seth Rogen and his gang. Why are they more ballsy? Here's why. This style of comedy and their style are similar but different. These guys, yes, they improvise, and yes, they're all friends, and yes, they probably do drugs and all that too, but what they do different to the modern comedy landscape is they made a story, and they came up with jokes, written them down, constructed them. While the comedy scape now with like Seth Rogen and all that is, they come up with a loose plot line and improvise their way through and get multiple takes. That's the art form. Will Ferrell's a part of that school too with like Anchorman. But Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson are the guys that write down the material, think it through and improvise little moments and keep them in if you're lucky. And I think that style, the style of comedy that, that this is, is still prevalent today. Maybe let's wait another 10 years and maybe that's the reason why it's unappreciated. The joke styling. Who knows? Maybe this was just too conventional in an unconventional time. I think that's it. Now, Sam, we have reviews here from IMDb. Now, I have often commented, but this comment is has not been more true until this reviewing session today, that these reviews come from a different dimension where this movie, <laughs> where this movie did popular. I think of these as parallel universes in which the culture that we live in is slightly different and the vernacular and context is weird and we just can't understand it. It's, it's just peculiar. And these reviews... Mm, mm, mm. Now, I've included some negative reviews because to understand uh, uh, the movie, you have to get the positive and negatives. Isn't that right, Bartek? Yes. This first review is called A Really Fun Buddy Cop Flick with a Lot of Laughs. Eight stars, guys. Now, this one's a bit more of a straightforward. It gives you, it gives what we kind of talked about. This is what they had to say. Now, this was written in 2004, so the movie just came out. Fresh. <laughs> This is a fresher perspective. This is what they had to say. Starsky and Hutch was a film I was really looking forward to. 
I think Owen Wilson and Ben Stiller have great on-screen chemistry, and I really liked the last film they did together in 2001, entitled Zoolander. Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson make a great comedic team, so when I heard about Starsky and Hutch starring both of them, I was hooked immediately. The bad news for Hutch starring both of them, well, so the bad news for me, however, was the fact this film was being directed by the guy who made Road Trip and Old School, Todd Phillips. I didn't really care for neither one of them per se, but I was willing to give him a chance with this film, and as it turned out, I was pleasantly surprised with the outcome of Starsky and Hutch. So, Tonight I caught the sneak preview of Starsky and Hutch at 7.30pm. The movie was packed to the gills. Yours truly had to sit in the front row, which I wasn't thrilled about. But <laughs> <laughs> Yours truly and then I? Yeah. Okay. Yours truly. Which I was not thrilled about. But there was nothing else at the theatre to see, so I figured, what the hell, I'll make my neck, <laughs> my neck suffer for the next two hours. <laughs> Again with the gay jokes. <laughs> well, I don't know why. Well, the movie started about... <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. Well, the movie started about five minutes after I got into the theatre. Starsky and Hutch, as I'm sure everyone knows, is based on a buddy cop TV show from the 70s. The movie is pretty much the same thing. Starsky, Ben Stiller, and Hutch, Owen Wilson, are partners who are determined to bust their biggest case ever. Reese Feldman, Vince Vaughn, is a drug dealer who's planning one huge drug deal, but soon Starsky and Hutch are right on his trail, thanks to the help of their pal, Huggy Bear, Snoop Dogg. A lot of funny mishaps, spoofs of the original TV series, and an overall a very enjoyable film to ensue. Ben Still and Owen Wilson, like I mentioned above, are matched made in heaven. They're both funny guys who work great as a team. Vince Vaughn was very good here as the villain in the film. He had the whole rich playboy thing going on. It was very entertaining. Snoop Dogg was also very enjoyable as Huggy Bear. He delivered a nice sum of laughs, and for once wasn't a completely pointless character. I love, now he gets into the girls. <laughs> <laughs> Amy Smart, who played Holly in the film, along with... <laughs> bothered to learn her name. <laughs> with Carmen Electra, who played Stacy, spelt with an I. <laughs> <laughs> we're both good at Starsky and Hutch's love interests. Yeah. <laughs> they only fucked Owen Wilson. <laughs> yeah, but that was implied. But Amy Smart said, "I still like your partner." <laughs> <laughs> Even the original Starsky and Hutch, Paul Michael Glazer and uh, Glazer and David Soul make an amusing cameo appearance. The film was written by three people, and all of which I wouldn't. I wouldn't think could create such a funny and interesting script like this. John O'Brien, who wrote Cradle to the Grave with DMX and Jet Li. <laughs> I didn't know he did this, but that's good. Todd Phillips, who wrote Road Trip and Old School. And Scott Armstrong, who also wrote Road Trip and Old School, wrote this film as a team. And as I said earlier, I'm quite surprised that the film turned out so well. I must actually applaud all three men who wrote this film. There was some there was some really clever and classic moments in the film. The dialogue was very good and the characters were very well formed. I enjoyed the script a lot. <laughs> Shoot this person. <laughs> Wait, they've still got a bit to go. Thank you, Todd Phillips, for proving me <laughs> <laughs> for proving me wrong. I was really scared at first that I wasn't going to like the film. I have to apologize to Mr. Phillips because I never thought I would see the day that I would come out of one of his movies and be very satisfied. The man wrote and directed a really good movie here. He delivered the laughs. The settings he chose for the movie were great. He filmed the whole thing in Bay City. I felt for the characters. I really liked the characters. I just overall really enjoyed what he did with the film and hoping, and he's hoping for part two. 
<laughs> and that was eight stars, right? Eight stars. I can't wait to see what he writes for a nine star movie. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see what he writes for a ten star. <laughs> the next one is Great Sunday Hangover Film. 2007. And this is a seven star review. Hand on my heart, I did not want to watch this film. Although I grew up with the TV series and really enjoyed it. When the film was released, I have to say I was not keen. I cannot put my finger on why. Perhaps it was Stiller, who something about Mary apart, uh, who something about Mary apart, has never really done it for me. But whatever the reason is, it still remained. It remained unviewed. That was two thousand and four. Xmas. 2006 and I get a DVD and I get DVD vouchers so when the January sales off I go to see what I can get I do quite well <laughs> but I have three pounds remaining I have two or three to choose <laughs> okay, why is there so much to tackle <laughs> I have two or three to choose from two I've already seen and Starsky and Hutch so I bought it Yet it was unwatched until yesterday. Hungover and feeling a little lazy, I needed something to pass the time that was easy to watch, funny, and not too taxing. So on it goes. How surprised I was when after only a few minutes I was giggling away, still it was actually entertaining, and I was enjoying watching him. Mr. Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> was very good. Uh, I got the vibe that the characters gelled as the ones in the TV series did. Vaughn, I love Vaughn was a good baddie, and Snoop was height entertaining, if not as camp, if not as a camp huggy bear. If that's a camp huggy bear, <laughs> what's this? did he say? Height entertaining. He was height entertaining. Oh, and he was spelled height too. <laughs> 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 all in all, this is a good solid comedy film. Not brilliant, don't get me wrong, but worth a watch. Now those are positive reviews. Now we have a negative one. But I just that review, I just really wish that there would be like a newspaper reviewer who spent that much of their <laughs> review just like so I got to the cinema and then this happened. No, it wouldn't even say it was like my parents met <laughs> <laughs> on a cold. But guys, day. remember he does very well for himself. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a one star review. Now remember, I said a different dimension, so keep this in mind. Okay, I'm ready. Truly, truly awful. Please don't waste your time. Written in 2007. <clears throat> this will be very, very brief. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it is, kind of. a lot of lines. Sarah, Sarah J. Marcus, Mike, and Dr. Gore all summed it up quite nicely. This is a truly, truly awful, pathetic film that has nothing. I mean, 100% nothing. It's not funny. And then in brackets, I lasted 49 minutes before I could take no more. It's not entertaining. It's not entertaining. It's not interesting. It has nothing. Please do not waste your time watching this. Nobody can give you that time back. And you will wish that you could. I really don't understand how makers of a film can sit back, see a finished product like this, and think it's worth putting out there. BTW, why does the voting here not allow you to select zero? This garbage certainly isn't worth a one. I can't be bothered wasting any more time writing this, writing about this pointless drivel of a mess of a film. I love he goes... Why can't I put zero? <laughs> you can <laughs> unrate. You can give no rating. Yeah. So that one, I just loved how he's just like, yeah, Dr. Gore on Mike. You're like, I don't know who, who are these, these people. people? <laughs> I thought it was like Al Gore. He's just like, I'm like, oh, Al Gore gave it a shit review. He's, he's expecting name recognition of these people. So this is a 10 star review, guys. Buckle yourselves in. This is the first 10 star. Oh, God. Better than the TV show, 2005, this was written. This movie was absolutely amazingly funny. I was in tears the entire time from laughing so much. Ben Stiller, Owen Wilson make a much better team than the original guys. I hope to see a sequel hit theaters sometime because I would definitely go see it. My favorite part has to be when Starsky dances with that extremely agile and graceful man at the disco. <laughs> 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 it was an... <laughs> 
<laughs> it was an and this is good Papazic. It was an awesome scene to behold, but he wrote scene as in S E E N. I think he means awesome sight then. <laughs> no, I don't know. I watched that part again and again and again. Sometimes though, I may not approve I love Oh wait, sorry. Sometimes five times in a row. It's just simply amazing work. Kudos to everyone. Though I may not approve in real life, I think it was very realistic to add in the coffee scene. It was very realistic. <laughs> ben Stiller was great. That's an old cat. Great. Starsky. I think he's very attractive and he needs to wear those pants from the disco more often. <laughs> I am not really a fan of the original television show, but this movie just really brightened up my day. All I have to say is, I love whoever decided to create this wondrous movie. <laughs> well, they didn't do as much research as the first reviewer. Now, Bart's like, calm down, because we're entering a different portal now. Oh. 2004, this was written. Ooh. One star. Ooh. All the tools there. And still a mess. Oh no, and still a miss. <clears throat> this review may contain spoilers, so in case you haven't seen it, <laughs> let's take a tour down the shopping mall. Oh my god, this one's long. <laughs> no, it's just really well spaced out. Okay. Let's take da- let's take a tour down the shopping mall. Buy all the things needed to cook a lovely dinner. Take it home and spoil it all. This is what this movie is all about. Everything is there and in place. A story that is good enough. Scenes that could be. Actors look good. Outline nice. Everything in place. But it fails. Heavily. Snoop D. (laughs) Snoop D. Seems to be the only bright spot. He portrays a snitch that caught the trailer making guys with his will be famous comment on the golf course I know even more about grass this is a movie that could have been a five star but unfortunately all the good food is botched now wait half spoiler section this is the half spoiler section of his review he writes I've never heard anyone (laughs) clarify their spoilers like this (laughs) <laughs> in all caps half spoiler section mm. ironically one other scene that attracted the trailer makers was Hutch like he puts it as a question mark Hutch entering his Ford Torino I like a question mark on that too <laughs> at the entrance in a at the entrance in a cool move in the after texts this scene was shown when the stunt driver crashed slash wrecked the Ford it broke my heart. Since I am a Ford fan, but it is a real, it is a really, it is really a big, a really big irony. He had everything going for him. Cool car, a cool scene, but crashed it. In contrast, they reshooted the scene when, in reality, the whole movie should be remade as well. And then, <laughs> 100% spoiler section. <laughs> I, I, I don't even know what this means, by the way. Because <laughs> this I've read it twice before, I, I, and I don't know what this section means, okay? Hold on, Bartek. Okay. <clears throat> Copying Captain America, Peter Fonda, and Billy started of like a cool move until I <laughs> spotted the disc brake on Watt's front wheel. And I... <laughs> <laughs> and at arriving at the saloon, <laughs> he, vis- he visibly collides with the parked car. Sigh. The front. <laughs> Bartek-, Bartek is in his chair in a bowl, pretty much. Sigh. The front brake was not enough. The final jump. Another total miss. The car is visibly destroyed. Who do they take us for? Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> What's he talking about? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, the final jump, another two missed. The car is visibly destroyed. Who do they take us for? Idiots? Yes. <laughs> and the worst part, and the worst part, I rented it. End spoiler section. Bottom line, take my advice, skip the film. 
That was, and you think that was good? Wait till this. This is the final review. It's a long one, but oh my mm, okay. The fiery red Torino fishtails to a halt. We spill onto the streets, ready for action. <laughs> <laughs> That's the title. <laughs> Sam, you you write. Make that a title of a book. <laughs> Can you guess how many stars? Yeah, you're right. Ten. Are there any tissues in here? Nope. Sorry, bro. Oh, well. We are crying with laughter from that last one. But yes, the fiery red Torino. <coughs> Fish tails to a halt. We spill onto the streets. Ready for action. <clears throat> Thankfully, Starsky and Hutch owes more to the Brady Bunch slash Galaxy Quest breed of TV spoof. The fond homage rather than the soulless ripoff that was I Spy or SWAT. On top of that, S and H foregoes the big screen remake approach and manages to imbue this film with the with the kind of intimate small screen charm of its own. <laughs> There's not much in the SPFX department. A little green screen on a lizard's tail, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes on him, it was blue paint. <laughs> <laughs> Just stunt driving and disco dancing and and cool characters, but they spell cool C O O space L. <laughs> so it's like cool. Cool. cool characters. It occurred to me that this sort of 70s character based TV has given way to the ensemble drama where the characters are secondary and the formula is the star. Hence you can hence you can set CSI or Law and Order in any city and serve up a variety of interchangeable casts to populate your formula. To make it to make it palatable to an audience who doesn't give a damn whether this remake is anything like the original, the char actors <laughs> Yeah, they accidentally put a space between <laughs> characters. The char Actors. I thought you were saying like child actors. Mr. No, the char actors <laughs> <laughs> have been polarized and exaggerated to turbocharge the humor. Paul, Paul, I love, this is just all spaces. Paul Michael Glaser's intense David Starsky in Ben Stiller's hands is more Mr. Furious, a by the book struggling against the legacy of his super cop mother type. Owen Wilson takes the Ken Hutch Hutchinson a few steps further along the continuum of laid-back Nordic detachment, <laughs> <laughs> becoming a Wilson-esque drifter who, com who comfortably straddles both sides of the law. Thus, he becomes a perfect. Th th thus, he becomes a perfect pacifier for his fran frantic partner. Isn't that great? He's a pacifier. <laughs> All the original elements are present and exaggerated. The on-screen chemistry between the leads, the innocent and endearing homoerotica, <laughs> the cool Ford Gran Torino and its ballistic skid turns, the busty cheerleaders and the smooth and charming leisure-suited villains played straight down the middle. All the humor emerges from the from the from the seriousness of it all, the charming simplicity of a more innocent time. In an age before AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, in an age before... <laughs> I know, it's a hard time, Sam. In an age before AIDS, terrorism, and political correctness, <laughs> Starsky and Hutch, tough talk, roughhouse, sleep their way through a daisy chain of leads and informants on the trail of a mass shipment of artificial coke, which mimics the real stuff in effect, but is undetectable to, to police labs or sniffer dogs. Starsky and Hutch take their polar opposite characters into each new situation and the infamous buddy cop chemistry manages to keep them stumbling along in the vaguely right direction. The unlikely tabulous of scenes like the holsters and hand towels, the attractive informant disrobing during her interview, the undercover mime artists and the ridiculous disguises are mostly lifted directly from the original series and tweaked only a little for laughs. Starsky still doesn't like Hutch eating in the Torino, and Hutch still lives in his little Venice villa with his 
Indian hemp throw rugs and healthy milkshakes? Do we see him drink any milkshakes? <laughs> he gives one to Ben Stiller after the hangover. Oh, thing. there you go. He got it. Oh, yeah, that's the right. Oh, I guess. Yeah, 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 I guess. He puts raw eggs in it. Stiller especially has worked hard on his little Starsky etch moves, the bow-legged swagger, the hyperactive twitchiness, right down to the I Ching necklace and silver pinky ring. Little touches... Little touches like that, 95% of the audience will never recognize. Starsky and Hutch is populated by the usual Stiller slash Wilson family singers. Vince Vaughn is the delicious perfection as the bad guy, drug dealer, family man. Of delicious. (laughs) (laughs) And Will Ferrell, both ones were spelled with just one L. Will Ferrell is the ad-lib Saturday Night Live skit character with the eccentric sexual tendencies and the attraction for dragons. <laughs> like that classic character. Out of an Easter weekend audience, I think most were in their 20s or below. And so David Soul's one and only pop hit, Don't Give Up On Us Baby, has never been played in their lifetime. And yet our audiences seem to get the fondly self-referential humour and the ridiculous situations. If all the guffawing was anything to go by, there was a group of teenage girls behind us who choked and then they were and with a space between each letter. A and D. A and D. So a girl, a bunch of group of girls behind us who choked and hyperventilated so much during Will Ferrell's interrogation scene, I thought you'd have to put on oxygen. <laughs> As a fan, as a huge fan of the original series, I should have found all this insulting, predictable, and groan-inducing. But instead, it was nostalgic and endearing. As much as I love special effects and action-based blockbusters, I realized I miss these sorts of characters. Of, get this, of today's crop, only Monk is carrying the banner for quirky character based <laughs> charm. That show existed as well? <laughs> I love, he's just like, Monk, that's the only show today that's worth watching. <laughs> so that's it. That's the reviews. I know I, they were long ones, but they were fucking weird. The, the, what does <laughs> the AIDS one have to do with anything? <laughs> because this was a time before AIDS when humanity was better. Um, Thanks, gays, for your aids. That's what I'm saying. With those reviews, I shudder to think what the IMDb message boards are like. Oh, we've done that. And one, I think it was like the tuxedo, which is like, my dad's truck was in this movie. (laughs) (laughs) After that, I just can't be bothered to look because can you get better than your dad's truck being in a movie? When I was 14, I commented on a message on Jaws 2. Fucking and brilliant. I still about every six months get another notification <laughs> <laughs> about people arguing about Jaws too. Uh, what did you say? Uh, it was. It was. Did you just go? It sucks. And they're like, "How dare you?" No, it was trying to argue about whether or not a girl got eaten whole or bitten in half. Fucking hell! That debate's been going on for ten years. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and everyone's like, "But the angle from this thing, oh the way the God. shark moves," and I'm like, "I'm DB. You make me." Happy. Well, guys, we've come to that time. We've had an emotional roller coaster journey. We've laughed, we've cried, we've felt weird homoerotic attractions to Snoop Dogg. <laughs> I didn't think that we were going to bond like this, but we have, and you guys have been there to bond with us, although we can't hear you or feel you. I imagine the feeling is sticky, <laughs> and the feeling is good. That's the way. Uh huh. Uh-huh, he likes it. Until next time, guys. Until neck. Till neck time, guys. Till uh, next minute. Um, remember, you can contact us with any kind. Of, if you want to, you know, request a movie for us to do, feel free. We have the Facebook page where we have a link there that you can just drop in requests for. Because hey, we may have not done Starsky and Hutch. You know, I could have forgotten about it. I could have thought no, no. And you know, maybe there's a movie out there that you're just sitting there going, oh, why haven't they done this yet? You know, in that day it could never come if you don't tell us. We we just wouldn't be able to know. Uh, we got the iTunes and Podbean Spin Polish Presents. You can look at all of our material and catalogue there. Uh, enjoy. Um, Sam's only in this one. So in case you're like, I want to hear more of his attractions to small black men. You can't hear his thoughts of Meet Dave, where Kevin Hart's in it. Who's a small, muscly black man, though. So I don't know how he <laughs> feels about that. Not the ab- same, no. I don't no, know how he feels about no. that. So, you We've know. Got Percy Jones, though. Percy Jones, Bernie Mac. 
So, you guys have been fantastic, wonderful, amazing, scrupulously great listening people. Until next time, be kind to each other. Yeah, do that. For sure. Definitely be kind to each other. Please do that.